not gonna lie, I thought it, I was gonna make a joke about "Do you remember?" Because I'm like, that sounds just like that <laughs> song. Like and then it turned out to be that song. <laughs> yeah, this was. Uh, I have, I have not seen a lot of April Fool's pranks online today, but uh, this is the Spotify one, Disco Cover Weekly. Oh, that's great. And so it's a mixture of disco covers and covers of disco songs. I am enjoying. Very like cute. like the internet has always been pretty good about putting effort into their things, but it seems like. Nowadays, most of the stuff that grabs headlines is providing actual value. I think it started when... It's all Think Geek. With, I, with, base it. I blame Think Geek. Well, Think Geek uh, probably started it, and then tangibly Adult Swim streaming, you know, out of nowhere, wait months ahead of schedule, the new Rick, Rick and the, Morty episode. Yeah. Like, and, and Rooster Teeth today is making like their whole back catalog free, which is normally a big high value thing. Oh, nice. So it's like, uh, I kind of I dig that. Like, I've always thought of... Uh, April Fools as as Internet Christmas yeah. and is feeling more and more like that. I saw I saw I, a good tweet that was like, all these websites that are doing you know old fashioned retro designs of their website are having a shocking realization when their site loads very fast and doesn't have a bunch of Java shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My daughter uh, explained to me that she had no school today, and I was like, you don't? And she goes, no, it's a holiday, Dad. And then I thought. I had that perfect moment of like, well, what holiday is? Oh, you. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, oh, it's not this. I'm do this. Yes, hey, everybody. We're going to do weird things here in just a minute. Hmm. up some technical stuff here i will say that my favorite moment of the weekend was uh organically getting a text from andrew that i had no idea the context to oh <laughs> and thinking it was one thing and then finding out that it was another thing i have a feeling we'll talk about it <laughs> weird oh i don't i don't get text messages i'm excited to see what this is oh it's not that exciting. Uh, well, okay. So I was trying to build up some excitement. For the show. <laughs> I, I, mean, I wasn't going to mention it. Oh, um, really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, all right. Like, I know everybody's waiting for my opinion on April Fool's Day, but like, the internet kind of killed it a lot. You know, with yeah. yeah, you go to places and they have like they people spent their lunch hour, you know, on Friday coming up with a bunch of dumb things to do on Monday, and you go to sites. Some places, some things are clever, and I'm like, oh, that's clever. There's thought went into it, but I'm like, oh, here's all the fake news stories. It's like, great. Now I got to go through. Hey, putting snake into Google Maps, fun. You know, yeah. like, I'm going to write a bunch of fake news articles that you know aren't real, and then you got to go through that. Mm. Um, I almost lost my last night going to Snack Overflow. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because um, I forgot, and then I'm like, like they and they did like man the smartest way ever if they wanted to if wikipedia really wanted you to pay to upgrade to like to support them go look at what stack overflow did with their website i don't oh they did it's that there they had a it was like they did again 90 style so everywhere your cursor went and oh. little sparkles that fell it was like a geo city site i'm like ah i'm like how much to stop this so i think but, after last year when gmail uh <laughs> Was it last year where Gmail had that button where it would send someone a GIF and it would delete that email thread and would never notify you about updates for that re thread? Oh, Do you remember geez. this? Yeah. I the drop the mic button. Oh no, no, I don't remember this. It was uh, it it. Let me see. Drop my Gmail. This was I think it was last year. No, 2016. Oh my goodness. Okay, that was a while ago. But uh, it would it would put this little minion GIF of a minion dropping the mic. Uh, and uh, you wouldn't be able to reply. You like, would get would no more replies. Yeah, you would not get notified of any more replies. Ooh. Um, which is is apparently Microsoft uh, last week had to put out a whole thing that was like no pranks for Microsoft. Yeah. We cannot do any pranks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. I'm glad. Uh, I actually just realized now why Google is sunsetting inbox five days after when they said they were going to, which was going to be at the end of March. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think, look, you're launching something new. 
like I, I think Brian's Brian's idea is it, it's better as Christmas than Halloween, right? Yeah. If it's mm -hmm. you're getting something cool, something cool happens, uh, yes. that's rad. But if it's like we're pretending to be something else or we're we're gonna be clever here, spoiler alert, you're probably not. You're probably just going to annoy people and and that'll be that. So it's like if you're doing something cool, even if it's not exactly what you want, have some tangible benefit that like, oh, I'm glad that I came here and spent my time on your site and and did something. Like not just dressing up and pretending to be another thing. Cause like that was cool. Man, back in the day when it was only a few sites that did it, like, and it seemed like there was some more thought put into it, it was pretty rad. Now, just really annoying. Yep. Preach it. There you go. All righty. I think I am good on this side. How are you guys feeling? Okay. Uh, <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Let me just make sure that's not dangling. <laughs> So uh, we have uh, a foundation poured. Yeah. Oh. And we closed on a loan. Woo. Uh, awesome. Awesome. So what? The foundation settles, and then uh, then the build starts to happen on on the warehouse site. Uh, as a matter of fact, the build is already starting because it's a steel building. What they do is someplace far away from here. They have all the the specs, and so they cut all of the steel things exactly to spec and then they show up in four weeks and then they assemble it like a barn raising thing mm -hmm. gotcha. uh, but in the meantime i believe uh within five days septic starts and within five days like they've already started doing demo on the house oh they, on the really? Inside? really yeah they yanked down all of the lights in the um uh in the kitchen oh weird i yeah. you know i only was in the equipment room so i must not have yeah seen yeah well yeah. Uh, uh jason told me i was like what are you even talking about and i walk in there and sure enough there's just a, a mountain of of cables and lights oh and wow yeah well good yeah yeah hey look at that uh i uh i finished lost season one over the weekend what do you think I am liking season two a lot more. <laughs> because, really? Be, be, because I'm actually like, start, there's a point in season one where you're just like, okay, we're there. I see you see the formula of how they write those episodes. Uh, and uh, I, I uh, wanted. Uh, spo spo uh, spoiler alert, get used to a lot more of that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. But it was like, now that you see what's in in the place and there's the guy in the place and there's the name of a thing oh yeah yeah, yeah. that first episode of season two just delighted me yeah. so much like like that 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 fundamental transformation of context where i was like oh oh right okay well this is interesting yeah yeah just yeah just to give you context that's how much people love that show that that literally it's an entire show about a mystery and then they blue balls you on, the whole first year uh, on 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 the reveal in the finale mm -hmm. and it's like oh you better come you better come with something interesting it better be more interesting than everything i have in my head you pieces of garbage and then sure enough yeah. episode one season two it's like all right you delivered okay, i mean that's something well, what do you now got, I've got something. <laughs> so that's uh uh that's been uh been my experience getting going through loss for the first time all right how you feeling andrew i'm great all right then uh, if you're ready, feel free to take it away. Yeah, yeah let me pull up my show notes here. Okay, sure. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Ready? Ready. Take it away. Let's go. Three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, you beautiful Justin people. Justin Sorry. No, no, I, I, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Everyone knows. Yeah, you're right. It's implied that I would say hello. Sorry. Do you want to start that again? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go for sure, it. Sure, go ahead. Uh, let me try this again. Um, hold on. Let me, uh, let me set up my, my screen sharing, too. Let me get uh, this going. Get the app going. Um, I'm not good at multitasking. I admit it. I say it up front. And uh, all right. All right, let's go. Ready. <laughs> hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Well, hello, you beautiful people. How are you guys? Excellent. Justin Robert Young. Oh, hi, friends. How are you? 
Mr. Bryce Castillo. Oh, that's me here working the working the dials. Yeah, he's tweaking the knobs. Yeah, I'm... tweaking the knobs. <laughs> um, listen, uh, today's April Fool's Day, and we like to think that year round we are kind of just fools and stuff. So uh, when you talk about weird stuff, there's nothing really weird that you can do that would really surprise people. So it's going to be a straightforward podcast. And that's not a setup for let's sneak in something weird. It does sound very much like a setup for, for let's sneak in something <laughs> weird. <Yeah. laughs> like like you saying that made me think, oh, my God, is there a bit that we were supposed to be doing that I didn't know and about? Also, now I think we're all assuming, like, wait a minute, like, did, is everybody else in on it? And I'm the one that they're going to play the <laughs> joke on? <laughs> like, yeah. Oopsie. Um, no. Um, I, man, like, I got a story that, like, uh, you hear the title, and you're like, oh, it's funny. And then you get to the reality, and like, this is horrifying. This is perfect for April Fool's Day. You're going to, you're going to think it's funny, and then you're going to realize that it's dark. Wait, is this like, this is another goblins thing, right? Where we had so much fun about goblins, and then we had the slow realization of what <laughs> goblins actually meant. Goblins was just a slur for other humans who were sneaking into people's bedrooms and molesting people. Yeah. Uh, I, you tried to find an image of a goblin to use my visual thing, and all I found was like the Harry Potter one. Which Close if they enough. Were all like a, yeah, if they were all accountants and stuff, that would be great. Um, but no. So um, this is not quite a goblin story. And it's, but man, all right. So let's you build, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's not snakes. Okay. Uh, and it's not spiders. Okay? okay. So let's say you built yourself a hospital somewhere. Okay. Let's say you built uh, a hospital. And what's the worst thing that could happen? Um, an infection. Uh, oh, I know. Uh, it could be located in a period of time before people understood germ theory, back when doctors didn't wash their hands between patients and all of your maternity ward was dying because doctors refused to believe that they should wash hands. And then you try to tell everyone about hand washing and you even demonstrate by having people uh, uh, swallow uh, uh, pills from other people's infected material and you factually demonstrate ger ger germ theory, but you're derided by all your pre peers for your so-called filth parties and they mock you and laugh you and it's decades of people dying before people figure out you're right. That is a very specific example, Brian. <laughs> I mean, uh, but it's but but it does satisfy the the requirements, right? That would be pretty bad, right? Yeah, yeah, I would say yes, yes. If we had to go back in time and build a hospital, that would that would suck. That'd be a bad thing that can happen. I would have set a uh, fire. <laughs> yeah, I would say if it was haunted. <laughs> so we're all on the haunted. same page. <laughs> a haunted <laughs> fire. A, 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 a hospital in the past that's on fire. Yeah, yeah. Right? I think you're right. I think all those are right. I'm going to give you a different scenario. Um, modern day, you build a hospital. Let's say where you built it, though, not everybody was in agreement that it was the best place to build it. Was uh, it? So maybe it was like uh, on, on, on the outskirts of town. Like sometimes these happen where there's like rapidly expanding communities. You think that there's going to be one plot of land that's going to be a big neighborhood. Next thing you know, financing falls through something else happens and now the hospital's way out in the boonies yeah and like 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 right on touching the city limits but outside of it also the land used to be a nudist colony and a cult compound <laughs> okay i kind of hard to imagine that scenario yeah um, sounds far-fetched shut up <laughs> yeah. yeah just don't dig too deep there brian just don't dig too deep into the ground just saying. I mean, I was doing some research for a book on Texas. Not that we're talking about any kind of specific place. And some of the oldest places in America where people lived, right where you live. Like, really? You know, yeah. I mean, we, we could find like 20,000-year-old Native American bones there. Uh, unrelated, um, the architect, uh, 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 period, new sentence, uh, the architect that is working with us on designing everything is uh, a, a real uh, Indian hippie, and he is 100% convinced, and it comes from a place of expertise, that this was at some point Indian holy ground, and he's able to point to things that I'm like, well, this this tracks, wow. Well, you know, I, I and just side note here about talking about where you build and the history of places, which relates to what we're, or the story here. 
uh, I was doing for the next Theo Cray book. You know, I have he's visiting a professor, and she lives in an area not a little further away from you, but around that area. And I was looking at the, the the old old history of that part of Texas and the different groups there and stuff. And it's it's fascinating when you get into places. You know, we think of America, we don't think of a lot of deep history, even with. A lot of what we understand about Native American culture is maybe eight or nine hundred years old because you know went through upheaval even even right before the you know the condist you know before the Europeans came. But um, you know my pet theory is the Neanderthals made it here. Ooh, it's some really. Yeah, you know I can't prove it, but why not? Uh, but anyhow, no, it's not not that. I built a hospital, and some of the locals that were there were not too happy. What if the locals were monkeys? Oh. What, uh, how would they? Ex- I, what's funny is I'm asking the question out loud, but I know exactly how monkeys tend to express their dislike of things. And my guess is that method of 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 slinging uh, probably not conducive to a hospital environment. So I think I was well, actually kind of close with my filth party comment. They also biting and scratching. They do that too. Yeah, I was I was gonna say yeah. It's usually the biting of soft things like you know eyeballs and genitals. <laughs> So a monkeys lay siege to hospital built on their land in terrifying footage. Oh my so God, we have was, footage. We have. Yeah, footage. Uh, let, I'll get, let's see if I can. Okay, in Durban, you, South uh, Africa, they built a RK Khan Hospital. Basically, this is where monkeys used to live here. This was sort of they probably had territory here for quite a while. They said we need. They're like, we'll build a hospital. It's <laughs> just a bunch of monkeys. We'll just push them aside. Uh, Justin, sidebar. Yeah. Look, yeah, I know that we tend to trust each other and we tend to be on the same page. Sure. But I am feeling a non-zero chance that the footage we're about to see is just going to be straight up uh, a rip from Rise of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> like what are like do we trust like like give me give me the true Vegas odds you would give on whether or not this video is going to be what what we think it is right now. See, Brian, this is the difference between you and I. Is that Andrew gave that uh, a big? This is definitely not an April Fool's Day te- tease up front, right? And you have been forever on guard, and I immediately forgot about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I <laughs> believe that I will trust Andrew. I think that it's a hundred percent. He uh, he spends all of his time looking for weird things, material. He banks it all, and he is uh, uh, ready uh, to show us something amazing. Despite the fact that nobody else seems to have known about this, that's not odd. Andrew often <laughs> finds things that uh, nobody else has heard about. I'm a little hurt. Um, <laughs> but I can't tell by which side. <laughs> by the one of us who believes if, in your if, pranksterism or the one that doesn't. If I was going to pull an April Fool's prank, it would be way better than, hey, monkey's in a hospital. Because that's believable. That's totally, I would have to sort of give you a little bit, build you up. And then put you in a position where you're like, wait a second, we fell for that. Where like, yeah, monkeys and that's a totally believable thing. We've got there's the no nothing. I don't win anything if I get you to believe this. Fair enough. It's like, hey, I'm drinking orange juice over here, guys. Ooh, April Fool. I mean, it's it's that level. It's Tang. Yeah. <laughs> <See>? <gasps> oh my god. This so should this is- be footage from a movie. Dude, this looks like outbreak. It's it's out uh, the outbreak monkey-sized monkey, and and there there there's one already uh, hanging out, and there's another one, two, three coming in. Oh my gosh! So they're climbing on the rabbit monkeys. They're climbing on the railing, like curtain railing, um, in in this hospital room. There's probably four or five on screen right now. Way. <sighs> and I assume. Oh my God! Uh, another one just walked in. Uh, it's a little sinister because these people are. Oh, there's one on the floor. Oh, they are going to the yeah, floor patients too. Patients are in beds with the monkeys. Now, I mean, to me, this looks like the best hospital ever. Shows you what yeah. I, I. Can you imagine if you are very ill and bedridden and you can't even get out of bed and you're just seeing this? Uh, like, like if they want to sit down and start eating somebody's face, there's uh, nothing to stop them. Well, I couldn't stop a nurse from eating my face either, Brian. So <laughs> fair you know. enough. Also, I'm scared of nurses now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wow, yeah, so this is very sinister because I didn't realize, uh, for a second I thought that this was after people had been evacuated, but no, this is an operating hospital with a bunch of patients laid up uh, uh, in in rows here in hospital beds, and these monkeys have zero fear. Yeah, man, they're, they're going all over. And, oh, man. 
Yeah. So, so th- th- this is something where, where, I mean, did they have to like chase him out or, or, you know, do they like blow an air horn? Like, how do you get a, a how do you stop a monkey invasion? Well, they would like your help, guys, because that's the problem is they can chase them out, but the monkeys keep calling in. And, you know, this is a hospital in, you know, in your place like South Africa, you know, you generally you keep your windows open and all that because I don't think they have like a lot of central AC, et cetera. And that's sort of the other problem. You know, that's one of the things we forget about is, is we've, is we've moved to places where the weather is sort of different than we're used to. We're, our, our spaces are much more enclosed sort of in, in parts of the Western world than they are in, you know, where it's warmer or different environments. So for us, well, you just shut your windows. Well, there you shut your windows and it's not as much of an option. Yeah, you end up baking so, alive. So uh, mm-hmm. in this case, have they actually attacked or just infested? Is this, is this more of like a, like a fungal infestation or, or an actual coordinated, we're going to stick it to the man? Well, again, this was their territory, so they're looking at it like, well, this is new, but we're still going to go in there. The problem is that they say the monkeys have been stealing food, and you got a bunch of helpless people. And this is also, you know, they've had, um, you know, like, lab. you read the last sentence there, last month, the yeah. monkey hit the headlines after it kidnapped a baby so it had someone to play with. Oh, my word. Uh, I'm against that. Yeah. Yeah. But now imagine the superpowers that baby's going to have. It's going to be like preternaturally like a half monkey and, and it'll learn how to commune with its brothers. Like I mean, I'm just saying, it's silver I, lining. I, I guess all things being I equal, I'd rather make, oh my God, that really is a kid that was lured away by monkeys. Uh, I guess all things being <laughs> equal. It was my dream when I was a child. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather a kid get stolen by monkeys than wolves. I mean, that that's a darker story, if you ask me. Predators. <laughs> But ideally, a hospital would be animal proof. Well, yes. <laughs> I'm 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 picking the the lesser of of multiple evils of of stories I know of children snatched from civilization and and raised by non humans. Mm. Seems like monkeys would be slightly better. Uh, yeah. I well, well, it depends. I mean, you know, there's bite your face off monkeys, then there's you know, climb on your head and scamper around monkeys, and so you know, it's 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 a it's a highly, uh, it's a, it's a good debate. It's a good debate. You know, it's not up for debate. Is What's we need that? your support. We need your support. Indeed, patreon.com slash weird things. Patreon.com slash weird things is where you can support this show. Thank you to everybody who supported us in March. April, we are trying to continue to keep this party going, and you can do so at patreon.com slash weird things get a custom rss feed so you get our after things program that is the show we do after weird things where we talk about creativity making a living for yourself doing what you love all the questions that you could possibly have we answer right there on after things head on over there right now patreon.com slash weird things all right guys i got another story for you this one's totally not depressing (laughs) all right i believe you hey Headline, why do so many pets keep jumping off dog suicide bridge in Scotland? April Fool's, it's depressing. <laughs> um, dog suicide bridge. Uh, uh, okay. Is you heard it, about this? I, 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 I saw the I headline. Saw headline. Yeah, I saw the headline, did not read the story. I would assume if there's a sneaky reason for it. Uh, uh, in fact, maybe Bryce could do some fact checking on this. I remember hearing that um, that during a concert, Trent Reznor's dog was being walked on the top of a building and went chasing after birds and leaped at birds as they flew away and fell multiple stories to the dog's death. And that the people kept it from Trent Reznor until after the concert. Uh, yes, this appears to be true. Okay, uh, do we know where it happened? Because I thought I heard it was in Austin, but that sounds more like party talk. Uh, Nine Inch Nails was performing in Columbus, Ohio, Oof. and he flew home to. Uh, oh no! Yes, the set was in Ohio, and uh, and and so so I would guess that this is a similar situation where there are birds or bats or something that love to fly out from that bridge, and that dogs tend to want to get them. And so that is the reason why, because now it, 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 it's a trend. Like dogs have continued to jump off this bridge to the point where it's earned the name Suicide Bridge. 
I mean, really, you only need twice to call it a trend, right? <laughs> like, I, I wonder how many that is. Well, yeah, once is a tragedy, twice is a coincidence, three times is a trend. You know, in, in, in general, it, and this is actually a rule in journalism, that, like, you, you really want at least three independent instances to write a trend piece about something. So uh, uh, what, what's your guess? I think I think I think you nailed it. I know, I think yeah. I think because like you read the article and it's one of these things where kind of everything you need to know is sort of in the headline. Job dogs keep jumping off this bridge. I probably <laughs> think they're chasing animals. <laughs> I, Maybe I, put your dog on a leash when you go near that bridge. I feel like I did the show a disservice by by exactly targeting the most rational Explain response. Explain things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one quote says the dogs catch the scent of mink pine martens or some other mammal and then they will jump up on the wall of the bridge and because it's tapered they will topple over Ooh. Ah, the taper. Oh, oh, oh. though uh the the quote continues that the overtown grounds are quote more spiritual than other parts oh, probably because well. of all the dead dogs <laughs> you know you're in you're in england like everything's gonna be spiritual there you know oh god yeah when we were in in scotland a, a few years ago like literally everything that we were walking uh, above around and near in edinburgh was older than america right <laughs> like there's there's just everything's old as crap out there in europe well and and uh think about the, the reverse like it's really remarkable to to realize uh man i really what, what are we at like maybe a hundred and s- 180 years of Texas being Texas, uh, like you can't find much that's more than 250 years old out these ways. Whereas like to us, very old stuff is you're walking around New York and there's a cathedral from 1625 or whatever. Freaking yeah. freaking Europe gets old, old like like that. Uh, that stuff is like, oh, yeah, no, this was this was, uh, you know, Christ was alive when this was built. You know, and that, I mean, that, and that's the interesting thing, though, is that we were. We talked about that a little before, though, uh, is we have Native American culture, you know, in, the, in North America in particular. Like, there was a huge population, and then it went through decline, and then all of a sudden Europeans came, and guess what? You know, you're, hey, welcome to genocide and disease. And, you know, we would show up in where there had been villages before we'd heard about places, and, you know, they'd either wiped each other out because of disease that we brought or other things. There was a, there was already a, a there was a decline in population, and then all of a sudden the thing that pushed over the edge is the Europeans. And that's the thing is we go places like you know you go through Ohio though, like you look at those big like the big mounds, like those things are fascinating. You look around like, you know who who built these? You know they're you know the 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 Romanian ancestors got pushed off to some reservation somewhere else, but. There's a lot of places like that. You go into New England and other places where like this is a great place to build a town. Once they leave, you know, <laughs> well, and, and I, yeah. I suppose that there's a natural advantages to certain places to build. And guess what? You're probably not the first one to have this idea like, oh, look, mm-hmm. there's a natural windbreak here. There's a spring that bubbles up out of the water. This seems like a great place to build a, 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 a settlement. It's like, yeah, many people thought that before you there. One of the reasons that archaeologists love caves is caves are, you know, like. If you're building out of wood and you're building out of materials like that, it doesn't last long. You know, these things go away, and so you don't know what was there before. If you build out of stone, obviously you can find these things. And so in Europe, once we started building out of stone, we're like, oh, look at this history. But it's also like, yeah, there's there's 30,000 years of human history there before – more, you know, way before going there. There's, a you know, several half a million years of Neanderthal history there. And we'll find every now and we'll find a cave that we realized, man, this cave had been continuously occupied for 100,000 years, either by humans or Neanderthals or back and forth in some places like Denisovians. And that's one of the weird things like, yeah, for like 1,000 years, it was just humans lived here. Now we go below there, we found a Neanderthal layer. Below that, we found a human layer. And that's probably true of a lot of places, but, you know, the things we build out of, they decay. And particularly, in, you know, what happened, like, you know, Central and South America, you know, unless you built something out of stone in the jungle, you know, we go over and we find this temple in the jungle. Like, guess what? 800 years ago, it wasn't in the jungle. That was all cleared land and farmed and, you know, everything. Yeah. It was just vast tracts of open things. And there was, you know, all sorts of villages and things. And then once they start the decay, then things change. So I like, you know, it's, it's very, I like to look at, try to look at things through like, you know, a really old lens, you know. 
Then, yeah, yeah, it's it's funny because uh, I, you know, as human beings, we all love stories, and if you pull back that lens too far, it, it becomes harder for me to to really wrap my mind around the stories of the individual tribes that 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 got there, and it starts to I don't know, humanity itself looks like a multicellular, uh, for lack of a better word, infection or 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 you know, a, a colony that that is just sort of growing, and it's hard to really focus on the story of any one cell in there, which of course, you know, in our current lives, we're all a single cell in a giant multi multicellular organism. Yeah. You know, yeah. These are two of my favorite objects. These are real as far as I know. Um, and uh, this is a, I've shown this before. This is a scraper and this is a hand ax. Uh, this would have been Neanderthal. So this would have been, you know, any hundred thousand, 300, 400,000 years ago. Okay. And this was a scraper. This was a little, a little bit more contemporary. Um, you know, some dude used this or woman used this or Neanderthal, who's a different kind of human, you know, who we only have like 2% genes common. You know, this is somebody who lived probably 50,000 years ago, 60,000 years ago. This was a tool they used. You know, I think about this just like to me, they're, they're it's just like they're real. They're real things that were used by people so far back in history. It's just I can't even wrap my head around that. Yeah, the uh, uh, the rational optimist has a pretty good hunk talking about, you know, the beginning of, of consciousness and, you know, how to, I, mean, I might be mixing stuff up here, but I, I believe he uh, portrays it uh, in terms of it's no more conscious to create a hand axe for a Neanderthal or, or, or one of the precursors to modern Homo sapiens than it is for a uh, bird to be credited with doing engineering as it creates its nest. It, it just sort of is like, well, that's what we do. We chip this down until it feels right. And great. Now I got the thing that cuts the thing. Uh, and that um, it's really uh, in, uh, he credits the beginning of kind of humanity as we understand it when it comes to specialization and free trade where it's like, oh, wait, I can spend half my year learning to make fish hooks and fish. And then the other half my year, you're making, you know, a, a hunting uh, stabby things, or I could just specialize in the one and then trade with the guy who's really good uh, from that other tribe and specialize. Yeah, I think that's that's a, a very good distinction between making the thing that somebody made and, and how to make it was evolved over time versus things that you sort of think up in the moment or improvise and have utility. And, and if I'm remembering correctly, like there's an astonishing amount of time, thousands and thousands of years of hand axes only being things that you held in your hand before somebody had that spark of innovation that actually thought like, oh, it seems like if you attach it to a stick, more like a tomahawk, then all of a sudden you're getting a lot more done. Um, that is remarkable that it took us so long. Something that in an age where we see innovation daily, and hourly almost, you know, the important innovations and and where all of us have more ideas than we have time to implement them. It's so extraordinary to even wrap your mind around, you know, tens of thousands of years of just, you know, using it the same way before you even think about what else can I do with this? Man, I have moments every day where I go after the fact, I'm like, oh, I should have done this, but I wasn't clever enough in the moment to think about it. Right. Know? And also there's that that thing that we all have this inertia and a good after things comment about how we think see the way things are and it's hard for us to figure out how to even when we want to do something different, we do something different within the lines. Yeah. And not and often our biggest innovations happen when people accidentally have to step outside of them. But uh, last story here, and this is sort of interesting. There was a National Space Council met and Vice President Mike Pence made it very clear that the goal is, this administration's goal is the moon in five years. Send people to the moon in return, a return mission from the moon in five years. So uh, n none of you guys have seen Apollo 11 since I recommended it, right? No, no. but I know what happened. Okay. <laughs> um, the uh, I, I watched it for a second time and uh, it's so remarkable to consider what it looks like starting from scratch. And now I, my reaction to seeing that headline was, uh, well, yeah, I mean, just knock, knock SpaceX, who wants $300 million? Uh, like, like, like they, they, SpaceX just show, sold off the shelf a trip to the moon. You're not going to land there, but you get to go to the moon for $150 million for less than a billion dollars. We could just say, yeah, we'll take three of those. And uh, also please drop this payload where something lands on the moon. That's uh, as astonishing and awesome as the ask is, 
equally astonishingly uh, astonishing and awesome is the pedestrian nature of the ask. Like, I, I think it's great that it doesn't seem like a stretch at all for us to have a permanent uh, presence on the moon if we don't mind paying retail it, within five years. Here's the problem. Uh, oh, good. Justin, were you going to say something? Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Um, you know, there was a headline we just saw astronauts say we're ready, you know, to go, we're, you know, you know, our, NASA's up to the challenge and all that. And it's like, the problem has been this, is that, you know, we've had these mandates before, different administrations said, we want to go there, we want to go do this, and then NASA comes back with a price tag. It's like, great, give us $30 billion and we can do it. And it's like, ha, $30 billion. Um, I can't get you that much this year. Maybe I can get you four billion this year. Then we'll see another four. How long? Five years? What if we? What do we do? Five or six billion dollars over five years? How does that sound? You know, and then it's like into first year. It's like we made progress, but you know what? It's going to be a little more expensive than we realized. You know, so we need an increase. And the next thing you know, you spent ten, fifteen billion dollars, and you have nothing. And you're like, screw it. We have to start over. Part of the problem is because the ticket, the, the price is never what we say the price is going to be. If that has been a and and that, again, when we say NASA, NASA is a continually changing organization. You know, there's NASA today versus NASA 30 years ago, 40 years ago. As as an administration or as a bureaucracy, the problem is, you know, prices go up. They're, they they give you they est they make estimates based upon what will get funded and then things. You look at the cost of the James Wood Space Telescope, one of my favorite examples, but lots of that stuff. It just goes higher and higher, and that's the problem. Is we can say, let's go to the moon, and NASA will say, oh, and the the number NASA is going to ask is not going to be a number that any, Congress and the president are not going to say yes and rush out to fund, and even then, it won't be a realistic number. So you are you you are bearish on this happening. I I mean I think that. So you had you know like two weeks ago, Jim Bridenstine, who's the administrator for NASA, said. Orion is going, Orion's the new next generation space caps. It's like Orion's going to launch no matter what, like next year, okay? Uh, even if we have to use a private partner to do it, i.e. put it on top of a SpaceX Falcon Heavy. Well, that behind the scenes looked like that wrinkled some feathers because Congress, there's different states that get their funding, you know, get or make a lot of money from that, pro, from the SLS program, which is the big rocket to send, you know, stuff there. And they don't, you know, you're telling them like, yeah, we make, you know, if you if you put that on top of a SpaceX rocket, then you start going, why are we spending several billion dollars a year on SLS, which makes certain, you know, senators unhappy. And then what? Yeah, that that's the the ultimate takeaway, which is a bummer, which is it's not a matter of technical engineering. It's not even really a matter of price. It's a matter of uh, political will. And, and I and, and and your skepticism, I assume, is not. Point one or point two, but point three, the fact that, that, that you are you are skeptical that if we don't even have the political will to stop flushing money down the toilet uh, with the SLS, again, uh, there is a, a valid uh, national security reason to continue the SLS uh, thing. But 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 we all acknowledge that it's not a cost effective strategy to get to, to space. If we can't even stop our addiction to SLS then how are we going to handle our addiction to, you know, uh, politically motivating people to spend billions of dollars, billions, plural, you know, to go to the moon? Well, because I think they're, they're the same problem, you know, uh, uh, they're yes, we are flushing our money down the toilet for SLS, but, uh, you know, Boeing and Lockheed and all the other companies that are, are building it, uh, they own the toilets, right? So we are giving people money. Uh, and they are building a thing. Whether or not the thing will be good, whether or not the thing will be cost effective, who knows? Because uh, uh, all the senator knows is they don't want to be run against by somebody who says, under this person's administration, uh, they lost X amount of people for the good folks of Alabama or Florida. Is, is it? Uh, I, I guess we saw this, and forgive me, I only half remember this, but wasn't this the the problem with the Joint Strike Fighter, the the JSF, where it's like uh, people had invested so much money in it that nobody wanted to stop, even though it became an increasingly ridiculous and and unhelpful uh, piece of military technology. I mean, I've heard that. I've also heard, I've heard that it's turned out to be a pretty good fighter. I don't know, you know, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, that's how my my 
I think one of the most tragic examples, in my opinion, was the Human Genome Project. You know, this was a project started in the 1990s to map the human genome to look, try to figure out what all the different genes, you know, controlled or what, you know, figure out where they were, not necessarily what they did. And you had Craig Venture, who was working as a researcher, one of the tens of thousands, you had all these major universities and hospitals and research groups working in this partnership with the National Institute of Health. And the, uh, you know, the process was everybody's going to work on a particular a particular part of the gene, particular part of the DNA in a sequence and try to figure out like what the sequences are. And then Craig Venter says, you know, there's this there's this method called scattershot, which instead of like doing this bit by bit thing, you just break it up to a bunch of pieces and then you have a computer, you know, go back and assemble it and identify what these sequences are. Right. So it was a much faster way to do it using, you know, supercomputers and newer tech. He went to the National Institute of Health was like, hey, we should do this. And they're like, no, we're happy because remember, this program was funded for like eight years or nine years. And if they did this, it would accelerate the rate at which they did it. And there are arguments to be made for why other reasons why they didn't want to accelerate the program. But the base reality was if they used this faster technique, the funding for eight years, they would have only needed, let's say, four years of funding. And so they said no. So that's when he went off and started Seller Genomics, a private company that says we're going to go map the human genome. And they used the scatter, the scatter shot technique, and were mapping it. Every time you mapped a sequence, you would go, you know, put it into this public repository of the gene. Say this is the gene bank. This is what we've discovered. This is what we've discovered. People watched as Seller Genomics was putting things in there at a faster rate than everybody else, like faster than everybody else combined. And they're like, oh, damn. They're going to beat us. This private company is going to beat the world's largest medical, you know, scientific research program in genetics ever. So that's when they did this famous, you know, truce between the head of, you know, the NIH and Craig Venter. They're shaking hands and we're crossing the, you know, crossing the finish line together because they were going to be embarrassed. They were going to be embarrassed if they didn't partner with them, you know. Um, and that's and that's the point where bureaucracy is like, yeah, finding out all this this DNA gene gene stuff is important and sure it'll cure people and all that, but we'd rather be funded for the next eight years instead of five years. You know, because it becomes about job security and and, yep. and and about making sure that everybody like, all right, well, nobody worked too hard because uh, then where's my mortgage going to come from? Well, that's when you go visit NASA, which a lot of amazing, wonderful people there, they're always in a constant position having to defend their research because they know there's a finite amount of funding. They've got to explain what they're doing, why it's important. And so when you go do the tour, it's show and tell. This is why we're important. This is what we're doing. And and you look at how they have these ready-made displays and all this stuff. They're like, how much time are they spending trying to explain to people why they need to be funded? Yeah. You know. Uh, what's the apocryphal story that almost certainly is uh, incorrectly attributed to Milton Friedman? P probably never happened, but, uh, you know, like, here, let's do a mashup thing. Uh, 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 canals being dug. Uh, Milton Friedman, uh, economist, shows up. Everyone's using shovels. He says, why aren't you using backhoes and, and, and big caterpillars? And the answer is, oh, you don't understand that this is this is not about digging the, the trench. It's about uh, jobs. And he goes, oh, in that case, why aren't you using spoons? Then, then yeah, you'd have yeah. even more jobs. Yeah, and, that, and that's the point. Is if your point is trying to create jobs, and then I heard a great one about uh, just like about we're running a deficit's not bad. You know, it's like then why have taxes? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> double, yeah, double that when, that deficit. Yeah, <laughs> just stop. Don't don't tax. Just keep running a deficit. You know, I'm like, uh, so yeah, and that's the thing. And and it, we're all. We want to look for ways to help. You know, how do you help? How do we help? How do we do this? And I think that, you know, I would love to see NASA with triple the budget that it has. And, you know, if it were 10, 20 percent more efficient, you know, triple the budget would be great. I would love that. You know, and that so, needs... so you are you are bearish. You, you would you would take the under on on this in order for this to happen. I mean, the answer is that there is a price at which this can be done, that Congress can agree on, the president can agree on and all of this. In this current climate, I do not think I, – I, I, I don't I, – I think that – I don't want to get too political here, but I believe there is an attitude of we would rather we, – we would rather take a – we'd collectively take a loss than let the president take a win if, if he lands so, on so, the moon during his administration. Uh, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, uh, it's a matter of, of the current administration not having the political uh, clout or, or capital to push this uh, combined with a general – 
tepid interest from it's the, the 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 country doesn't want it so bad that we'll let whoever's in charge as long as we get it uh that's great and meanwhile the administration doesn't have the current capital to push it as a visionary direction i i i mean that's what a way to phrase it i mean i i think you know i i think that uh i think that the current administration you know uh I, I think there's there is. I'm just gonna say this, like I, you know, last week we had a lot of people happy that it turned out, according to what we know about the FBI report, that the president was not a Russian spy. People were unhappy to find out that he was not, as far as we could find that. And so I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> you know, like that's good, that's good news, <laughs> you know. And so that's the that's the climate we're in, where like like. Well, find out what else let's know what else is there because like it doesn't mean like other stuff didn't happen you so, know but i was just like if know. that's the case do, do you feel like uh like making this a pet project was uh, if you're a if you're somebody who wants us to get off this planet does making this a pet project of this administration actually serve a, a, a negative like like yes. is part of you saying like please don't don't make this one of the things you want when, because when, 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 let's go into weird things gets political when mike pence says hey we want to go to the moon within five years that means assuming that trump gets reelected, we want to go to the moon and return while he's president that's the goal that right. is the goal that five-year time frame people are like mm, i don't think so you know and 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 that's why, because it's, it is a political goal. Sure, certainly, that's what the administration wants to be able to say. I think I'm like, great, sounds awesome. But other people are like, what? So he can just score a political win? It's like, maybe, but we go to the moon, you know? <laughs> and also, politically, it would be a lame duck, you know, the end of his lame duck uh, term anyway. So uh, I don't know uh, exactly. I mean, the, the, the horse would literally be out of the barn and apparently have flown to moon if, 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 it, does, uh, if it does wind up happening like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I do think that, look, th there are still a lot of very raw feelings about uh, NASA that are complicated even further by our current political system. Uh, the, the, the question to me would be looking at where the SLS, uh, the, 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 the key defenders are in the Senate and figuring out if you have a map that uh, somebody like Mitch McConnell, who, you know, has been fairly good about marshalling votes uh, would be able to push something through to have a big space win. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it to happen. The private enterprise and not just SpaceX blue origin. I mean, we, they haven't launched their heavy hardware yet, but you know, amazing things can happen, but it's just finding the political will. So I'm sure know, that, 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 yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, uh, that, 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 that might be more of an upset, considering the the uh, uh, ownership lines between, <laughs> uh, you know, Blue Origin and uh, the raw feelings between this uh, administration and him. Well, there's that, but you know. Uh, anyhow, let's do a uh, picks. Uh, hey man, I saw some movies. I saw uh, 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 Apollo Eleven a second time. I went and saw the Dumbo. Uh, but uh, my pick is Us. I went and saw Us. It's a good movie. You should watch Us. Assuming. You don't mind being scared and seeing um, really good direction to design to make you scared. Yeah, I, I'm going to double down on it and make that my my pick as well. Uh, I thought it was far more scary uh, than than Get Out. It was far more of a straight ahead horror movie than Get Out was. But uh, I, I think it still gave me what I now, having seen two of his movies, can now expect from Jordan Peele, which is uh, well-crafted, well-acted, good character horror, but also like, and you know, there, there's certainly a large conversation to be had about both those movies and, and Get Out, I think it soured a lot of people uh, the, the further that uh, the premise was explained. I really liked it. This is uh, a, a, another movie where I think Jordan Peele is committed to explaining why things happen. You know, there is certainly some gobbledygooky magic stuff in there, but uh, the, toward the premise, you're not just going to get, oh, they're just crazy or, oh, they're just nuts. Uh, uh, there, there's elements of that in there. But I like the fact that he uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always a, a big lore nerd. I like it. I like it when 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 the lore uh, 
is uh, explained, and he does a very good job of that in this movie. So, uh, separate from us, has anybody happened to tune in on that new Netflix original animated series, Trailer Park Boys? No, I saw. I got a push notification for that. I, I didn't see any of the Trailer Park Boys stuff. Had, did you watch the animated? Uh, yeah. Well, I watched. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think two or three seasons, and and it filled. Um, it was like methadone to my affection for Always Sunny in Philadelphia, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I never finished it. But I didn't need to finish it to instantly get where they were going with the animated series, where they do spend the whole first episode. Uh, this is not a spoiler because it happens in the first five seconds, but. The first words they say in animated form, everybody is in a jail cell together, and the first words out of their mouth is, holy cow, we ate so many mushrooms that we all think we're cartoons. And then we watch them experiment with cartoon logic. And then, uh, and then like, the second episode, they're like, uh, oh, man, it's been a week, and we're still crazy high. And then by the end of the second episode, uh, one of the characters is like, I don't know. Maybe this is just how it is from now on. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm still me, I guess. <laughs> and then that's the last mention about them being cartoons. <laughs> and from nice. there on out, you get into increasingly madcap cartoon territory. Oh, I, I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Did, had they even announced it? Because I, I, it was a total surprise to me. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a real sort of shocker to me. Um, I have a pick. Um, uh, I am late to the train, but I am on it and I am on it until the end of it. Uh, I, uh, have gone through the first season over the past week of Lost. Yeah. Classic ABC supernatural drama thriller thing. Uh, I, my feeling at the end of season one was a little bit of a bummer. I, you know, I'd mentioned before that uh, I was really interested in the OA on Netflix, which is a similar sort of puzzle box thing. And what I liked about the OA is it's very short and it's very dense, so you get a lot of weird stuff, but you do get a lot of answers. And when I was done with the season, the first season of Lost, I was like, oh, there's not, there's, I, I'm waiting for for some sort of payoff. I want payoff. You expect a payoff at the end of the, at the end of, you know, a big budget show like this. Um, but now I've started season two and season two is where a lot of stuff starts picking up steam. Uh, and so I, I don't know. I am, I'm into it. I actually over, felt like I over binged it the other day just because I, I watched a, 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 st a shameful amount in one day. Uh, <laughs> now, and now, you, know, you know, it's funny you say that because mm -hmm. To my knowledge, that was in DVD world the like viral binge show. Like mm. in in my mind, that was the show that kind of like invented the idea where you would come back to your friends and for the first time say like, "Oh my god, you want to know what show I just like binged over the weekend?" Was the DVD for Lost? Like mm. that was it was it was like a. a you know, DVRs were around, on demand existed, but it wasn't ubiquitous, right. and uh, it was kind of annoying. I think it was also like a pay thing, like you had to pay the extra to rent a DVR. Or if you were rich, you had a TiVo. TiVo had been around for a while. Mm -hmm. But that DVD, I remember just like having my friends like and myself like just – you, you sit around and then you would talk about how many episodes you watched in like one day. And that was the first time I ever remember having those conversations. And now that's that one that, that, that yeah. killed, that was the meteor that, that killed the dinosaur when of I, uh, the weekly enjoyment thing. And, and I think if you were rewrite, if you rewrote lost for today, if you did season one of lost again, I, it, it would be so much shorter. It would be much more compact um, because but, yeah, uh, uh, by the way, spoiler alert, uh, that's, that's probably the thing. There's a lot about lost that projects well mm -hmm. into what has happened on television. Then there's the fact that that episode count. And by the end of the, the final seasons are around like 12, 13, 14 episodes. Mm. But those first three seasons, woo, yeah. especially when trying to carry that flashback formula, Wow, Gosh. there's a lot of episodes, man. Yeah. As but, far as the binge thing, yeah. I think the only other thing I could think of from around that time was Battlestar Galactica. That that was one that that a lot of people missed the beginning of, but then everybody got, you know, up. everybody heard this is the best sci-fi in decades and then and then everybody just watched and and I'll, I'll I'll go to the mat with anyone who could 
point to outside of the expanse of first season as good as Battlestar's first season. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's <clears throat> that's kind of the only thing I'm wrestling with is seeing the formula pretty pretty uh, pretty clearly. But uh, I season two for I've I've heard a lot of stuff about season two. I'm sure there's a whole rest of that season left for me, but the beginning of it, the first few episodes, I actually feel good because it, at least it's continuing to expand the world and and show a lot of new weird oh, things. You you are you are you are just at the beginning yeah. of, I mean, talk about lore, uh, uh, like the, this. You you were just at the beginning of kind of the, the ratcheting up there. There's plenty of uh, plenty of weird bottle episodes and plenty of yeah. uh, uh, flashbacks that you might watch and and say, oh, "Geez, really? Another one of these? Do we really need to know uh, that you know Sawyer's a con artist with a heart of gold? Uh, maybe if we watch him do one more scam where he feels <laughs> conflicted, then we'll really know." Yeah. Uh, when you get there, okay. note and let me know about when sure. the major sci-fi prop that currently resides at Wizard Academy shows up. Okay. Do you know about this? Uh, uh, maybe, but I'll... I'll okay. I'll, uh, I'll, cause I, we'll have to talk off the podcast. Cause you, we'll, we'll talk off the podcast sure, about sure. it more. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting into Lost, and so that's kind of a neat thing. So that's on, that's on Hulu. Hulu's got that. Nice. Andrew? You know, one of the things they did, too, I was just thinking about Sci-Fi Channel, because... With Battlestar Galactica, like to get you into that was remember how they like they kept replaying all like the earlier seasons, and I think they even aired them on like NBC or something like that, you know? Because like like what did we do before we could just, you know, oh I'm just gonna go online and watch them all, you know? Well, I mean a lot of people did that with the the you know, illegal copies or the torrents or whatever. Um, but you know, it just it's interesting, like you know how the, the just the evolution of binging. Um, <clears throat> hey, do you know what these are? Uh, oh, did somebody get on the AirPod train? Man, I mean, everybody. Uh, hey, where have you up? been? Oh, Guys. Oh, no, 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 no. You're thinking about those. <laughs> you got these two. These guys. Andrew's holding up AirPods. So you're, identical you, cases. your pick is not AirPods, but a second pair of AirPods. AirPods too. I've been using AirPods okay. forever, Brian. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. I've been on that train. I'm the conductor on that train, Brian. <laughs> um, I've been a big fan. And so when they said AirPods too, I'm at the point where like I can notice my battery life has gone down because I use them so much. I got AirPods dose here. Uh-huh. And you're like, oh, the AirPods, they look exactly like AirPods. Except actually I had my 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 name and all that put on there, which oh, you know, sure. we can see. He's got his Twitter. But, uh, anyhow, at Andrew hey, you know what's cool about these? These AirPods too? Yeah. Yeah. That um they yeah. feel exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but um you can just go, hey Siri. And she's in my head. It's yeah. it's no touchy, no whatever, hands free Siri. It's actually super weird because normally when you do it on the phone, you kind of, I always wait for the little beep. And with this, it's it's better for you not to wait. It's better for you to just talk and say the thing, and and that's super super duper weird because that's just not how I'm used to. So wait a minute. So so you have you have the twos too? Bryce? Yeah, I yeah. snuck off to the domain the day that they arrived in stores and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, spent about three hours getting these. Hey, the domain is very big. Yeah, it is. When you park on the wrong side, it's, it's uh, was, very big. was there a line or, or just oh, no. just getting around? Yeah, it's just getting around. <laughs> it's true either uh, way. I, I will say, and I have become increasingly more frustrated with the Apple company and uh, uh, their their products. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it is the fact that they care that they canceled that air power charging mat and we saw something that was kind of verboten in, in a previous incarnation of Apple, like straight out vaporware, a thing that they made yep. a big deal about and then just never happened yep. is a troubling sign. For those for those that know, two years ago, Apple announced that they were going to come out with a charging mat, a little charging pad that would charge your phone and your Apple Watch and your wire, your AirPods all in one thing, you know, charge them all. And that they wouldn't have, like, because with charging mats, you have to kind of be very particular and get them in the right spot, um, where their idea was that this would be a little 
you this would be more expansive. It yeah. wouldn't matter. Maybe it could jostle a little bit. Maybe your phone would ring. There's been a few times where I, I, I wirelessly charge on, on the a little pad next to my bed, but every once in a while, either I don't put it down right, either I get a, a call and it, it vibrates it off the, the little button that it needs to be on, yeah. and I wake up with a phone that has zero charge on it, right? Uh, that So that's that's troubling. All that is to say that the only thing recently that I've gotten and I felt, oh my God, this is the Apple feeling of they weren't the first, but they cracked the code was AirPods. Yep. Uh, yeah. they're, they're just always, they always work. You can uh, uh, pull them out of your ears and they paw it. That's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is just not having to hit a button to pause your podcast or your audio book. You just pull it out of your ears and they're, and they pause and then they restart as soon as you put them back there. But even like little utilities, like Brian and I were actually uh, had a call with Bryce, and it was actually a fairly like serious call with 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 Bryce, and it was easy enough that I could just pull out one, put it in my ear, pull out one, pull it in Brian's ear, and I wasn't worried about oh, cool. it uh, about it being a problem or disconnecting, or Brian and I could be as far away from uh, each other uh, at the bar as we wanted to be, <laughs> and uh, uh, like it was just it's it's the first time that Bluetooth has always been such a frustrating technology in that it's always so close, but yet always so far that uh, AirPods are very much worth it if you are in the iOS ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in the two, you know, it's improves upon, I didn't get the wireless charging on it. Cause like I've been reading articles about, you know, behind the scenes, like, yeah, this charging pad may never happen. So I'm like, I don't, I'll just use the cable. I mean, I use, I have a, you know, I have a fast charge stand that I use for my phone, but I love it. Like AirPods, like everybody, you know, you you when you do, it was a lot like kind of the original iPhone. You're like, no, really, G get this phone. Like, ah, I don't know. And then you get like, oh my God, now it's everything. And then in, in a world with Google and all those other devices, it's a different different question. But when the iPhone was the only thing, it's you know was like, well, uh, that's your choice. With AirPods, like if you're on an iPhone, I tell my friends just. Get get the AirPods like yeah like I'm like try, it's just a game changer you know the charging in the case is one thing the setup is great I, I went to a friend went with a friend to the Apple store and he walks out with his box and I'm like oh you want to set those up he's like oh, I'll wait till I get home to set them up I'm like no no just open it opens up the box takes out the case like just open the top of the lid and the phone's like hey do you want to connect he's like that's it I'm like yeah that's mm -hmm. it so yeah yeah they're really pretty cool I. Uh, uh, I, I got them because I, I had the Beats X like Justin did, and they had the in-ear sort of rubber, you know, um, uh, gasket sort of thing. And I, I don't really like that very much, um, but I really like the ear, the normal ear pod uh, headphones. And so my ideal thing would be something like the Beats X where it's a, a thread, uh, but then it has the ear bud uh sort of pod design at the end but these these stay in my ear which you know for a lot of people it doesn't i don't exercise very much so i don't worry too much about them falling out uh but they feel invisible i wear them around the house because it's not like this big deal of like i gotta put them in and i can't eat with the beats x because you hear the chewing and stuff and so mm -hmm. uh these are I, pretty nice everyday things i you know once you get used to them and, and the fact that now it's hands-free siri and that you get a taste, you're starting, like AirPods already, you get a taste of the future because now like, yeah, I leave them and it's funny, I'll have a conversation with my girlfriend and both of theirs are off, but we're talking to each other with our AirPods in because we just leave them in because when we sit down to work, that's how we, you know, we hear our computer or that's how we listen to our podcasts or whatever. And it is, mm -hmm. I think that we're going to see the next big tech thing is going to probably be more wearable earpieces. Like I think if Amazon wanted to make big inroads is, you know, you could take, you know, echo and put an echo in part in the case like this, that could be have, you know, the Wi-Fi and then the Bluetooth thing here and have always with you. If you have Wi-Fi echo instead of yeah. the other name, that would be amazing because that's still my favorite voice assistant. Yeah. You know, because my, all my audio books there. I think that's where the push is going to be. I think the next thing is people can start to say, yeah, these things are really useful. What if you put a lot of what you do inside of your phone inside it? Cause you can have this, if you have the case with you and you have the, the Bluetooth, which now the next generation Bluetooth goes really far, you have so much of what you can do with computing right there. Sure. So we get closer and closer to her. Yes. And then she leaves us. Yeah. Spoiler. Spoiler. Because she, she was talking to Alan Watts. I can never wrap my head around that. Anyhow, it's been weird. 
Hey, look at I that. I know that because it says weird things behind it me. Does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take first shift on the on the bathroom train. Okay. Right. I'll uh, hold down the fort while you're there. Yeah, I got a, uh, I got a phone call uh, during that that I got to return. Okay. Oh. Hi, everybody. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing great. I've spent the last week working on this little coding project, which has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, building my little uh, uh, speech recognition app with the images for you know our people who are. I guess everybody's watching us live right now on video. So. Sure. Um, what this is is basically I built a thing that it listens for keywords, and so when you say a certain keyword, the image behind me changes in theory. So if I say uh, Bryce. Sure. No, it's in slideshow mode. So we'll oh, do that. Gotta get it off slideshow uh, mode. Oh, there we go. Wait, there is Bryce. Hey, yeah, it's Bryce. Click that. Yeah. Yeah. If I say uh, like Brian Brushwood, it's a little bit slow on the catching up with the words. Uh, there we go. Oh, well, there you uh, go. Okay. Yep. Uh, so anyway, I just use the. It's an iOS app. I use the voice recognition and then have it search through a folder full of images that have the names on there and then. Oh, I didn't realize that's how you were controlling because you you showed it off before we turned on the stream, but I didn't realize it was based on audio. That's clever. Oh yeah, all audio. I mean, I can I can go in there and I can press a button, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, let me see a list of the images that I have here. So, um, artificial. And I'll give it a second. Artificial. Uh, yeah. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So uh, it's just oh, the voice recognition. It's the voice recognition engines mm -hmm. looking at the word and saying, "Oh, let me find this." So I've cool. got like I have a folder of just of weird things images. So if we say sometimes it was popping up in the middle of it like uh, snakes, right? So if we're talking about snakes, then what will happen is it's going to look up for what's the image that I or or the word. Yeah. And I don't know if I need to restart to get it go slowing again, but let's see. Oh, yeah. it already stopped. Oh, okay. So is it a thing where you have to turn on listening? It's already enabled. So, yeah, now if I say the word snakes, there you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. There's Cindy. The spider. Yeah. That's cool. That's clever. Justin. Oh, there he is. So the goal is that uh, basically I was thinking about like for podcasts and stuff where you want to have a visual element to them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm is if you put a database with a large enough number of images and stuff relating that, as you speak, those things would pop up and create yeah. a video. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. oh no, I, I, I'm uh, excited. Like for, for live shows, I would love to just have like, even if it's just a square that like randomly changes to the things that I'm talking about, like mm -hmm. that'd be cool. Like just another dynamic visual that plays along with the message. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking about the idea of a presentation where one you can do, you can you can just do slideshow mode and you can you can have a folder like you can have each folder and then I could say give it the name and the image and just the idea of being able to do free form presentations with those images popping up as you speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and like I said, I built in a thing I used uh, Google Firebase, which is a really cool have you, are you familiar with this? No. no. It lets you it's part of like be, being able to build like serverless like computing for mobile apps. So oh, if okay. I want to stream this, I have I have a I have a website called uh, Lucid Lucid uh, LucidStreamer.com, right? So if I take a like right now if I if you go to go to LucidStreamer.com slash A R O P, you can just type in A R O P. Yeah, just go there. Yeah. Okay. So. That should Arabic. let me. Uh, oh, we do have adlock. I wonder if that does anything. All right, so let me go. I just got to work on my. This speech engine is. Yeah, it's like part of App Engine and all of that. Yeah. Um, oh, hey. Here we go. Okay. Yep. So now, whenever if I say uh, uh, brushwood. Let's see here. Now it'll take a little moment uh, to load. I have a function where it preloads images. Yeah. So oh, because it's probably downloading the image too. What's yeah. that? It, yeah, because it's probably downloading the image. It, yeah. it came up so faster. Yeah. I built, on your I built Apple. the thing, and they're like, if I switch to slideshow mode, mm -hmm. it, what it'll do right now is it's loading, preloading all those images to the server, and so it'll be fast. Because every time I say this right now, it has to load it up to the server, then go to there. Yeah. But once I I do that mode, um, let's see if I. Um... 
Let's see. It's in beta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. So, uh, yeah, that's a... Uh, yeah. It didn't have that image get loaded. It's yeah. loading another one right now. And so hey. trying to get... If we go back to see now, Brian is super fast now because it's yeah. already cached in your, your browser. Oh, um, gotcha. Clever. So, uh, Very cool. Anyhow. Yeah. Dude, awesome. And that was just like a weekend project for you? A week, a week. A it, week was, uh, it was one of these things where first I'm like, oh, I just want to pull up images as I say them. I'm like, okay. Oh, I need to be able to get them. So you can pull all your images from like iCloud or Dropbox or whatever. I'm like, oh, well, I need to be able to, I need to have better file access. So it's not just load them into your phone and lose them, you know? Uh So building the file access. And then I'm like, oh, you know, I want to, you know, add to this other feature. And like, also like, this is what my phone is showing. And you notice the display behind me is a different screen. I had to figure out how to do a different screen. Oh, sure. For the Uh the AirPlay. Yeah. Yeah. So doing that and then, you know, getting the directors and then getting it work. So Firebase is basically what you do is like the phone sent tells Firebase, here's the file. I stored it here. Here's an update. I just created a new item on Firebase for this channel. And then the web browser basically just follows, says, is there an up- as soon as there's an update, it pushes through. So the web browser isn't pinging the server for updates. Yeah. It's pushed. Oh, Okay. So oh. kind of a really cool way to build things. And actually the, the website itself, I used Google hosting for it. And, you know, so it was a project where it was like, you know, iOS speech recognition, figuring out how to do second screen, do that. Now I'm working on replay kit because what I want to be able to do is allow you to record it. So if you just wanted to sit down and do, let's say, record an audio podcast, but actually have a visual element to it to have the images move with it and be able to go through. Okay. That's clever. Yeah. So, Fortunately, I'm going to use restroom. Fortunately, Apple has a thing now called Replay Kit. Mm. Oh. It's for in, you know, re- screen recording, et cetera. So. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to leave you looking at Justin. Hey. Hey, Justin. How's it going, man? What's up, homie? Oh, you know. Uh, yeah. How was your weekend, man? Did you do anything fun? Yeah. Uh, had a fun little night with uh, John Teasdale. John is moving from San Francisco. Mm. Uh, he'll be down in San Diego. Oh, wow. Uh, but uh, uh, it's actually going to be, there's going to be more focus on kind of the stuff, the stuff that we're doing together because he's leaving, he left his job at Uber. And so now he's uh, going to be focusing on all of his independent projects including uh including the contender stuff so uh very excited that's great uh and it's not too too far away i mean it's yeah. like seven hours um oh. so oh right okay i was thinking i was thinking our, the drive that we did san diego to los angeles but yeah that would be and further. that's like two more much more of you if you hit traffic sure. um but uh we're like five hours, five and a half from okay. LA, and mm-hmm. then so you then you tack that on uh, on on top of it. Uh, but it, it it's a real quick flight, you know. It's like a, a an hour and change as mm-hmm. a flight, yeah. Um, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a uh, it's good. And then um, I have a standing desk now. I, I as part of John moving, I got the standing desk, and yeah. I've really enjoyed it. It's really been a good place to segment, like preparing for shows I do somewhere else, mm-hmm. like doing shows I do here, You're there, yeah, uh, in this in the studio. Because I just I think I realized that I the studio was not a good place for me to work. Like it was yeah. a good place for me to prepare. And it's a good place for me to waste time in between doing shows. <laughs> right. But like other than that, like in terms of sitting down, like maybe it's just like the chair's too comfortable or or I don't know what it is. There's something in my head where it's like mm-hmm. it really helped to segment out. And so now it's like in the morning, I'll just go get breakfast and then walk over to the other desk. And I like I've given myself like this very simple task in the morning, but it leads me you know, by the time I'm done with that. I've eaten, I've had my cup of coffee, I have another cup of coffee if I want it, and uh, I'm, I'm already rocking and rolling, and I can now get into the other stuff and just, like, bang out as much as I can in the morning because it sets me up for, for the rest of the day. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I saw your, you had, like, an Instagram post or something at it with it over the weekend. 
So yeah, I've been uh, also like uh, somebody made mention that there there was a lady uh, whose name I can't remember now, but she is great and she does these um, these awesome uh, kind of like basically like news summaries, mm-hmm. uh, 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 political news summaries, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like I wonder, like I could probably do. I wonder how easy it would be for me to do literally with just my laptop up on this standing desk thing, like just heightening it up. Like I'm sure I could come up with a rig for my phone and it'd probably even look better. And I could certainly get a Bluetooth uh, like a lapel and I could make it sound better. Yeah. But I was like, just as a, uh, yeah, Andrew's showing uh, uh, exactly all, the, all this cool stuff, but like just in my living room where I have good natural light, mm-hmm. uh, like, I wonder, like, just the literal dirt dumbest way to do it. Like, how would it look? And so it looks pretty good. And so I've been doing them, like, uh, you know, once every two days or so, uh, three days. Like, I'll just be like, oh, you want to know what? I should do it. And it takes me, I'll do three or four takes, shoot it right in quick time, mm-hmm. airdrop it to my phone from my laptop, use my notes that I wrote for myself to keep myself on track as the text in in the post and uh you know they've been doing okay but i think it's just more uh an excuse to kind of keep the instagram thing alive uh for when i you know if i wind up going down to miami for the debates or certainly next year for the primaries and the election and everything like just just making my instagram more and more of a place where it's like i'm just talking about politics and a little bit about you know my life nice <clears throat> nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I was yeah, showing you this thing is amazing. Uh, this is my my light source here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a little faux ring light with. Is that like a phone a holder? Yeah, it, got, it can hold your phone. You can put the ring light over the phone if you really want to. Yeah. yeah. I bought. I have a Ryzo whatever the I have a Razer's Kai the whatever camera, but I didn't turn. I just I bought that, but I bought this thing with the ring light. It's twenty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, and like. Yeah. But just and it's got it's adjustable like we can oh sure myself more you got color temperature yeah i have a similar um desk at, at at my apartment that's that's very similar it's like an led it's like a light it's some sort of nice light panel but it's got um dimming and uh color control uh and it's it's pretty nice i use it that's like my primary light when i do anything from home yeah, I was I was twenty bucks. I was like, if if I saw this rig, and they're like, oh, we got this cool rig, but it's it's a hundred dollars. I would be like, eh, you know, maybe I guess that you know I could use that, you know, like all right. And then it was like twenty bucks, and then I was amazed. Yeah, very cool. So. Alrighty, uh, you guys want to do after things? Yeah, mm-hmm. surely. A uh, quick reminder that at, at 35 after the hour, I'll have to I'll have to jump out for a second. Okay, you got it. Okay. Well, whenever you're ready. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Brian Brushwood. Aloha, Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends, and also our. Producer, partner, extraordinaire, who everything happens because of him, Mr. Bryce Castillo. It's true. It's a lot of expectations. Yeah. Hello, everybody. By the way, we appreciate you yeah. making that time machine and going back 10 years to create this podcast. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Very I mean, appreciated. Yeah. Did it exist before Bryce? I mean, I don't remember yeah. it. Check the Patreon. No one knows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, be I'm here. just saying, I don't know. You know, I mean, I, 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 I. I just, it's one of, there's a difference between Justin, Brian, and Andrew having a fun phone conversation. We go afterwards, like, hey, it would be cool if we shared this. Mm, and, to like making it a real thing. How was that transition for you? Like, if, if I don't, if you don't mind me starting off with a topic. Sure. Um, yeah. Because Weird Things is one of the older podcasts that, that is not just in name, but also, you know, it was, it was Andrew and Justin at first, right? Yeah, for one episode, and then I joined yeah, them on episode weeks. two. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, 
what what and, I, and I've still consider, <laughs> continue to think of myself as the the lucky guest who keeps getting asked <laughs> back. Oh, Brian, you, you are. You are. Even though you're the one streaming it, have control of the feed, and can any moment start doing the show without me. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, because I know originally it used to be like a very. I remember watching old live streams of the of weird things, and it would be like the the stream was on only because it was possible, and every you know there was no focusing on the chat room, no worrying about visual stuff. It was just the three of you guys on the call. There was a what, there was a fairly that? long amount of time where we were all banned, uh, a self imposed ban from having anything to distract us from the moment. Like we. Mm -hmm. Um, in those early days, as you can imagine, with a lot of improvisational storytelling, like distractions matter. And, and I think we've gotten to a place where we're able to open things up and there's value in hearing from the chat. Yeah. But but when we were really discovering what the core of what we're about was, I, I remember it being like, OK, OK, so it begins. Uh, shut shut down everything. We nothing exists but the three of us. Yeah. 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 That I think as Brian and Justin is you is is you went from that other show to night attack as your engagement in real time increased beyond just the show and overall and all that. I think that that's, you know, we sort of evolved into sort of bringing that engagement here um, for better or for worse. <laughs> yeah, I'm still on the fence on that. Uh, you know, um, but yeah, it's, it's evolved over time. And, you know, that's, Man, I mean, that's the thing. It's certainly, we were talking about between the break, you know, Justin was talking about creating content for Instagram. Yeah. You know, tell us a little about that. So, uh, uh, Bryce, did I tell you that I deleted Twitter from my phone? <laughs> I've, I've heard such a story. So Sorry. I deleted Twitter from my phone. How did you tell people you did this? Uh, uh, mostly I just uh, I wait until Bryce is on the, on the line. I just tell him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've been on Instagram a lot more and I've kind of appreciated how uh, Instagram is kind of, I don't know, for, for me at the very least, it does not hook into the receptors in my brain that make me a crack addict. It, it is something that I can enjoy for what it is. Uh, I am, uh, I, I appreciate following who I'm following and that's that. But I, uh, you know, got uh, the itch to be like, uh, or I saw somebody else, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to find her name now that we're talking about it uh, in in person. But she's got a new book out called News Not Noise, and she does just these little uh, videos here on Instagram where she kind of like explains news stories, and I think she uploads them through yeah Jessica Yellen. That's it. Um, but she does a, a great job. And it's uh, uh, super rad in in terms of uh, uh, her just giving a good summary uh, without it being, uh, uh, you know, a, a too much of a partisan kind of thing. I mean, obviously, she has a little bit of a tilt, but that's fine. Uh, you you want to bring your personality there. The the videos are are well shot while feeling personal. And so I have this new standing desk and I put it in the living room where I have great natural light. And I'm like, well, you know, like I wonder how hard or easy this would be and like what the reaction would be if I just summarized a news story, but kind of doing it more from the PX3 perspective and focusing a little bit more on, on the campaigns. And so, uh, you know, I, I uh, realized a few things, including uh, that uh, in, unless I'm going to start uploading them through Instagram TV, uh, I can only have them be a minute, but I think that's a pretty good self-imposed goal anyway for what I'm talking about. And uh, I, I can talk a little bit more about the these things that, you know, uh, uh, Yellen is very focused more on like government stuff and I'm more focused on campaign stuff. So it's been fun so far. I, I, I don't know exactly like looking at my other videos that I posted. Uh, it seems like it's uh, uh, getting solid engagement comparably to that. So uh, uh, we'll see if it grows. But this was the first one that I did. This was literally just like. I was hanging around and uh, figured I would try something and see how long it took. But it, it's been it's been good. Shoot them on my laptop, airdrop it to my phone and uh, uh, then upload it. It's the, fascinating that the way that airdrop, I mean, the way that Instagram works, that our art, so much of our workflow goes through our phone now. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Like, yeah, oh. no, I mean, that was the, the the workflow was literally based around uh, because I was initially very excited about uh, uh, Instagram TV because I wanted to upload my jury episodes because uh, it's a daily thing. It's about, 
you know, they, they were saying that their target for length is is certainly longer than the minute that you would get in your main feed, but nothing longer than like 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh, great, perfect. Jury Daily fits right in there. Four days a week, content, uh, uh, visual content, but it was such a pain in the ass to impossible to to upload it from the computer <laughs> like they or even just get it uh, from a pc to my phone and upload it and it just uh, i just wound up losing interest in it and i don't know a lot of people that are using instagram tv so i haven't revisit pardon revisited it but uh uh off a of mac going to my phone couldn't be easier airdrop just uh just works yeah we had to do that with the instagram stuff for for scamnation and modern rogue where we have to we render out a cut on a PC. I put it on Dropbox and then download it on my phone and then and then with Instagram, Instagram's wonky because you have to you have to trim it in Instagram, otherwise it'll not convert the video file. Oh, so you have to put to extra fat in there intentionally to cut. Yeah, to oh, cut wow. into it. Uh, otherwise, because I've had that happen where I've spent a day trying to get just a normal thing to work and it won't. Uh, it's so weird that. Instagram makes this super difficult, especially for something like Instagram TV, which is longer content, the ideally more produced content, some of the stuff that yeah, I've seen in there. But right? It does feel like in this age of, you know, Facebook is cancer, Twitter is cigarettes, uh, it seems like Instagram, still Facebook, still Facebook, is is coming out the winner as far as branding goes. Like little things like that, you're all caught up, no more to see here. That level of engagement, uh, I don't know, it seems like... Um, that's something that personally I feel like I'm very weak on, uh, you know, especially as 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 and we've talked about this, you know, when Twitter starts to feel like a liability, like with the James Gunn stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, it feels like the pendulum is swinging back. But but I've I definitely I was looking at my metrics and I've gotten quiet, like to the tune of half as many posts, most of them responses to yeah. people uh, chatting at me. But um, hopefully. Hopefully that that's something I intend to work on this year is figuring out more micro slices, if not on Twitter, then certainly on Instagram. I'm not doing near enough on that platform. Yeah, it's. I, yeah. Oh, play, oh play. Uh, I mean, I think part of that for Instagram is because it is so limited, right? Because it's all it's all photo or video based. The it's not some big threading in conversations. It is kind of a shallow structure. Obviously, people use it for, for a lot of different things, but it kind of feels like it's built to be this sort of shallow, wide um, you know, platform rather than Twitter, which is keep, keeps trying to like, you know, thread replies, right. mentioning stuff. You know, uh, it feels because it's more compact that, uh, you know, the, the constraints make it feel uh, Instagram better. feels a little bit more like a micro broadcast. You know, you're not going to spend more than a minute watching a thing. And pretty much the most you could do is hit a heart. I mean, you could type some words that probably nobody will see. And there's no easy way to 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 continue to make it like Twitter, of course, encourages back and forth, back and forth because they want it to be a chat room that sucks up all of your time. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems like Instagram is, is well positioned to pick up the slack. Yeah. And it sounds like you have got a good format here, Justin, for you know, another offshoot of your political project of, yeah. you know, making a version that is formatted for Instagram uh, instead of just chopping up a minute of part of the podcast. Right. And, it is and that's, and that's, I think I've, I've, I've done clips like, like Twitch. Is, that's a, that's a good thing about Twitch is that uh, organically people will be clipping out the things that they like the most from it, but very rarely are they in the political sense you know, cogent thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've definitely done stuff like that where I've just had funny moments here on on the stream, and I'll make those uh, uh, the uh, <laughs> the thing. I think this was somebody playing uh, uh, the, the the theme from Cats <laughs> on on the uh, Friday hype train. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, like the these other the the videos that you're actually shooting for Instagram feel uh, they feel kind of vloggy, but they also kind of feel authentic, right? If I was scrolling, yeah. I would think this is oh yeah, I mean he shot this for Instagram, but also it like even though technologically it's very like the easy you know what's the easiest way you can do it, just taking that little bit feels m like more more thought has been put into it than any more, other yeah, more, more, more direct post. that I'm, I'm speaking to my Instagram followers about the thing that I'm good at. And like, oftentimes I think that's the element that Instagram does get 
uh, uh, super right, uh, uh, despite the fact that I very much agreed with what a friend once described it as uh, Twitter for illiterates. Uh, I, 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 think that, <laughs> I think that it, it makes sub-literates. sense. Subliterates. 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 Sorry. Uh, it very much uh, understands visually. And also, spoiler alert, I like the ads on Instagram. Like, uh, some of them are garbage, but Good. it's like. You're going to get more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, like, there's a non zero chance that I see something and I'm like, either I like it 90% of its clothing uh, or some event that's happening in Oakland or, or San Francisco. But it's like, you know, the, the clothing stuff, I've bought two or three things that I've seen uh, uh, advertised to me on it. Uh, the other stuff is either interesting in that, like, oh, maybe I would like a piece of clothing like that or. Uh, like, oh, my God, really? Like, is that what my metrics are telling me I should be wearing? <laughs> that seems a little bit weird. But it's always, like, interesting. I, I never feel like it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, oppressive like it is on Facebook or totally useless like it is on Twitter. Yeah. My question is this. How long before Facebook makes Instagram suck? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, if I was going to place a bet, I, I think that uh, they, they have a, a sore paw right now and that they're going to move slow with Instagram. I think, I think that um, mm -hmm. Facebook understands that their main brand is fairly tarnished and that Instagram seems to be well liked. I, I, I would suspect they'll take their time. Uh -huh. Here, I, let me, but let's uh, phrase I mean, it there, this there, way. There, 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 there's two things that are already happening. Number one, uh, Zuckerberg seems very gung ho about uniting all of their chat platforms. Like they want to have everything feeding into one master chat. And I would assume that that might also mean one master stories section because they replicated that functionality. That I think would make Instagram worse for me. Like I don't like the people that are that message me on Facebook. I, I like having a little oasis in a separate place where it's only uh, uh, Instagram chat. Uh, uh, rare that rare though I get it. I enjoy when it comes in. Uh, and the other thing is like Andrew said, uh, just pump up that ad volume to the point where the wheels fall off. Well, there's, and there's more to like, I understand like Facebook politically is worried, you know, and they're, they're trying to say, all that. yeah, we should, we should have, you know, scrutiny. We should, these are things that everybody says when they want to sort of negotiate the terms of that. It's about ad doll. It's about revenue. It's about revenue. Yeah. And if Facebook, mm -hmm. Facebook's, is noticing that they're having a, a drop off in new users, less people are using Facebook and they're seeing growth in Instagram. And if they're making less money in ad dollars, wanting goodwill is irrelevant. It's like Google, I, I like when Google said, we're gonna, our policy is like, do you know evil? I was naive. I'm like, great, it's such a great idea. And then you're like, they bought double click and then it was like, oh, you're just another company, I get it. Facebook, they'll say whatever they can to win over public support, they're gonna make money, you know? And so yeah. if they're losing people to Instagram, which they own, and then they're gonna say, well, we gotta make it back in Instagram and we can do things. There's a, there's an article, or I was listening to the book Coders and they talk about the story of adding newsfeed to Facebook and how people hated newsfeed, how they hated newsfeed. And then they grew to love newsfeed. Like, I don't know, I kind of, I get why they did newsfeed, but then they realized, man, look at what they don't get into is like, Hey, newsfeed's great because our engagements went way the hell up and we have a hundred times more opportunities to sell ads. So, you know, what's the, I don't know, Brian, I, I hope you're right. I, I mean, I hope I'm right as well. Uh, yeah, because... I hope you're right. <laughs> well, and uh, but... talking about something like newsfeed, or I think it's very similar, like the homepage of YouTube, right? Um, I use YouTube a lot and I keep bumping up against the subscriptions of my YouTube. Not that I have too many, but it's that I want to watch something on YouTube and there's nothing new. And so I end up leaning on the homepage to show me more stuff. And I, mm -hmm. I feel like Twitter or Facebook has to be a very similar way for, for some people where they, maybe they don't follow a lot of people or maybe they don't have a lot of people in their Facebook network or whatever, but they want to see good stuff. They want to see new stuff. And whatever is the most recent thing is like, I, I, under, I, I understand uh, having that experience on YouTube makes me understand more the like algorithm move for Facebook and Twitter. Um, but it's tough if you're on the outside of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm pretty unplugged from like everything, you know, I'm, I'm 
I go into Twitter like Brian, like you. I go in there a little bit to like go see, you know, who's at replying me, and I'll respond. Um, I haven't had so many witty Bon Mots, you know, <laughs> the first time I've ever said that out loud, Bon Mott. Um, I, I, I've not used it that much. And as I get absorbed in either writing a book or some of the project, you know, I just don't go there as much. But also I find it too, like, I don't know, like, I'm like, do I, do I, do I want to open up that door to that vampire? You know, it's like comments. Like if I don't make comments now, because I'm like, if I make a comment, it doesn't stop there. And if I'm not even on a place like Hacker News, I'm going to wait for somebody to reply. And then I got to respond yeah. to that. And the next thing you know, I've wasted a day. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think we are coming to an evolved point of social networks. Uh, we are realizing its uh, drawbacks and limitations and how much we want to be involved with it. Uh, you know, I think there's there's kind of a lot going on, but uh, no matter what, there there will be healthy and unhealthy ways to deal with those kind of things. And even if, as, as Brian said, like Twitter or cigarettes, you know, cutting down is probably smart, you know, <laughs> even if you don't quit. Yeah. Yeah. So Instagram's vaping then, I guess. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed by the quality of content that, and again, it's like, hey, it's 2019. Andrew's talking like it's 2009. But like, and I watched, you know, season one and season two, you know, YouTube series of the seasons of Defunct Land. You know, which is, yeah. you know, the history of, you know, these theme parks and stuff. It's amazing. It's so well done. I'm like, I've enjoyed that more than probably any Netflix documentary I've watched in recent times, you know? And actually, like, I've gone through Netflix and, like, I, nothing, I haven't really been pulled into anything lately. I've been, you know, but, you know, I, I think about that, like, you know, like, you know, Modern Rogue, you know, things like this, the quality of a lot of these things now from these indies is amazing. And it's, you know, we still need to figure out better ways to compensate and to make it worthwhile. And, you know, YouTube, YouTube, you push for getting subscriptions. But the as you know, like a subscription doesn't mean watch it. You know, people watch it. Right. You just accumulate them over time. But, you know, there's different metrics and I don't know. And, 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 and. Yeah. I have, I have no answer. I have no. Uh, Bryce, what are you working on? What am I working on? Yeah. Um. I mean, I've got. I mean, all the work we're doing here with Scam Nation and Modern and you know shooting Modern Rogue and stuff, and then I've got uh, my podcast, the Trending Lemon uh, podcast. Um, yeah, how is how is talk how about that going now? Because you you've been you've sure. been rocking it for a little bit. Yeah, it's been uh, since December. I think it launched right uh, it launched like Christmas week. Uh, it's been it's been going well. Um, uh, it it originally started off as just doing the idea was it's like an interview style show but instead of preparing questions we do buzzfeed quizzes and uh over the past like month or two i've been working in news stories um things that are you know topical or or, or really big on social media so like last week we talked about uh i don't know if you guys remember the um the florida man headlines uh phenomenon right sure. Yeah, you, yeah. You, put in your your the, the your date of birth without the year and right. Florida man and Google it and you will find the Florida man story that happened on your birthday and everybody was having <laughs> a time <laughs> time I, I totally yeah. miss this phenomenon. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we we pr broke it down and, you know, uh, for from from my take on it, right? It's like, well, you know, those are still human beings, you know. This is kind of a uh, an upturning of your nose at what is a pretty open, transparent public records laws that Florida has, uh, and and also a possible security risk, right? Like putting out your birth date, uh, and and not just with this, but there are lots of things of like, well, you know, what's your fir the first letter of your first name and the first letter of your last name, and they give you a weird <laughs> My Little uh, Pony this is name. The 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 Buzzfeed quiz of um um. Uh, sharing the first seven letters of your mother's maiden name <laughs> will reveal this about you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but at, so, at some point, right, if you do enough of those, or if you're someone who gets caught up in those, right. you are giving up parts of your data. Uh, Find and, out the secret to your social security number. Type it in here and we'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. So so that's kind of some of the stuff that I've been trying to fold into the show. as Because a few months ago, BuzzFeed had the big personnel uh, uh, layoffs and and that kind of affected the quality of quizzes that were being floated <laughs> on the website. Oh, really? If that's possible. Yeah. Uh, it, just because I look for a very specific type of quiz, there's a lot of like pop culture stuff, like which 
Umbrella Academy character are you? Sure. Like, stuff yeah. that is not very good. But um, so I'm, I've been folding in new stuff to, to kind of um, uh, m make that form format wise uh, more sustainable. But otherwise, it, it's it's going pretty well. You know, the toughest thing for me is just booking people because it's it's just me and, and you know, a guest. So it, it requires a lot of like every week we got to got to do it, got to find someone and, and nail them down. But uh, I think I think things have been going pretty well. Uh, the other noticeable thing was two weeks back. This was this was the week of South by. I'd been talking on the show a lot about like okay, we, we take a lot of these quizzes, but I, I don't really know how they work on the back end, right? They have a very sophisticated platform to make these quizzes and share them and all. Um, but I never made one, and so I thought I thought I would be doing a very quick episode. I thought like okay, I don't have a guest because we're busy with South by, so I'll just do a quiz live on the show. I'll record it, and that'll be it. And I spent an, like an hour to an hour and a half trying because it it would not it would post and then it wouldn't work. The post was messed up or something. So uh, I I, uh, <laughs> I what I thought was supposed to be super easy ended up being like a really uh, exercise in frustration. Um, but that is how I that really happens. I like that episode. Yeah. By the way, I, I thought it was good. I think you should do more uh, either either one mic or 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 barely assisted kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I yeah, like, no, I, like I, think, I think my, my, my only note would be yeah. that you can uh, you could probably trim up some of the like uh, uh, pimento cheese sandwich. Oh, sure, sure, sure. What I'm typing. But other yeah. than that, like I thought it was I thought it was a fun deconstruction because to me, what I love about that show is you are using very obvious, uh, uh, you know, personality detours to kind of like do an interview, uh, mm -hmm. which is like in in a, a very very clever way uh you know that's where you get a lot of uh, uh kind of like the, the best interviews are when you just throw out a little bit of a twist and the subject starts talking about themselves yeah and this is such a great way to kind of do that organically but also uh exploring how these things work and how they're built and, and where you want to go with it i think was was smart and it was a great way for you to talk about the story, which was the Operation Varsity Blues, which wound up uh, uh, ensnaring a bunch of rich people uh, in, an, a, in a, a ploy to get their kids into various colleges, uh, that you could talk about it in a cool way. Yeah. And uh, that was the other part of that quiz on kind of the behind the scenes side was like prepping to talk about that news story um, kind of in a way I don't do on any of the other podcasts that we do or even on the other episodes. Uh, really cemented that I wanted to do news stories like that because it's it's um, because there's also really interesting things happening there. Um, but uh, having having a means to like really dive into a news story and understand it and then explain it and then take it into this other thing of making a thing um, was 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 great. You know, that's a lot of that's that's a level of research that I don't tend to need to do on any of the other projects. And so. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you like that. I might, uh, I hadn't, I hadn't really considered doing too much of those, uh, just because the outcome was so unfortunate. Um, but, but yeah, I, that's, uh, I'm glad you like that. Yeah, no, I think, uh, uh, you, you should, you should not be shy to, to mix up that, uh, format because it, it, it's, it's a good, it's a good format, but I think it's still finding like whether or not you are doing a clever version of the interview that gets somebody to reveal that like, you know, their mom left when they were five. Right. Mm. Or if it's like hot ones and it's like, Oh, we're just Very doing light. a clever little thing yeah. that it doesn't really matter what the answers are. It matters that you're seeing the reaction to this abnormal, weird, uh, uh you know, riff factory where, where the, you know, people can just go off. Yeah. And I think it's, it's still it's still finding what it is. But the, the first time that I really felt like you were kind of, uh, you know, it was more of an analytical show. It was more of a show about getting to the hidden truth about things was when you were building a quiz and you were like, OK, well, I know people are going to think like, well, what college do you want to uh, get into? Like Harvard, Yale. And then you have to think like, OK, well, what's like a mid tier college? Like now we're right. getting into the, 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 the psychology of like. You know, like, oh, did I go to a mid-tier school? Did I go to a <laughs> low-tier school? Like, yeah, uh, uh, that was good. I like that. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, yeah. Um, I uh, I want to talk a little. What I did here because it might be helpful for people. Like, I wanted to do a little more with my podcast studio. 
or as I like to say, the corner of this room. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I was thinking about like, man, like you guys have really good setups. You guys stream all the time and all that. I use this for, you know, two hours a week. Um, yeah. The rest of the time, it's sort of my work environment. So I needed something that was kind of flexible. Not the guys, what you do isn't work. Let me make that very clear. Uh, I just want to show you what I did here because like, I'm like, again, like I'm like, it's 2019. And I feel like, you know, like, you know, you take your grandmother somewhere and you explain stuff to her. Like phones are small now, you know, like I have an electric car. Well, ain't that a squirt? You know, I have no idea. So I'm that person. And so I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll put a monitor in back of me. I'm like, all right, like, uh, I, I, you know, I have a, I have a big ass TV to my left here, right? Big ass TV, right? Yeah. But I said, yeah, I don't want something big. I'm like, I'll get like a 50 inch or something, like, which it's funny because that's not big anymore. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go order on Amazon. I'll get a TV, put it behind me. How much? How much does a 4K 50 inch TV cost now? Uh, it's like what, uh, 3.99 or something? 300, Brian. Wow. wow. 299, 299, oh, right goodness. for this TV, right? Like Jesus. It, it, I remember when HD monitors were like, you know, ten thousand dollars, and so you can get a fifty-inch, you know, HD fifty-inch four K monitor for you know three hundred bucks, right? Wow. Cheaper if you just want to go HD, but HD, ooh. So I got that, <laughs> and then what I did is let me move this here, and I said I needed a support. I didn't want to mount it to the wall. Yeah, you've got I like put a, it on this cart. A, yeah, is a, a wheeled cart. Yeah, it's a wheeled cart, which was like like eighty bucks or something. So. You know, that lets me just slide it in and out of there, um, which makes it easier. And then I put an Apple TV, I've strapped an Apple TV to the back so I can stream to there doing that. But, you know, it has like, it. these things now come in like this is actually a Roku TV, so it has that built in. And I'm sure there's some other stuff there, but I could yeah. just use an HDMI cable, but I put the Apple TV in there and whatever there. Um, my light source, my primary light source, I was showing this before the show here. And again, uh, for our audio listeners, which is everybody not listening live, um, you know, the TV, I have the TV is off to my side there. So I can kind of, whatever I see, you see it over my shoulder, kind of like a newscast for my light source. I bought this ring light, which is very bright. If I aim it at the camera, which has got an iPhone holder. So you can, it clips to your desk. So it just clips right to the desk. And this is pretty good. It is better than the stupid thing I built out of the Ikea box, which I was so proud of myself. It's a nice, even light. I've got a little source over there. It was 20 bucks for this ring light, an LED ring light, which yeah. my first LED light for my video camera was like an $800 thing. And now for 20 bucks, you get something that holds your phone and can light and you can stream from. And it'll look better than like, you know, the garbage that I've done with like nice cameras and lights, but not setting the things up right. So. Yeah, you know, the tech you on on you know stuff. It, I mean, that's not even prosumer level stuff. This is just like consumer grade goods that are now good enough for this stuff. Well, right? and uh, relevant yeah. to our interests as we get ready to design a new studio. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Uh, like uh, as you're describing all of this, Andrew, I'm just thinking like, all right, let me make some notes here. Uh, talk to Andrew. Find out. I mean, what... even even in in my apartment where I'll do some some streaming stuff. I just have uh, some it's 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 meant to be like a reading light but the panel flips up and so it'll face forward and it will dim and change the color temperature and stuff it's you know that was only like 20 bucks and that was a couple of years ago yeah so you know as, as yeah like and I was showing like this ring light what's cool is like I can adjust the color temperature here yeah basic like it's just between white and amber but uh if I wanted to do you know, if I wanted to do more light or light more, I would look at like I would probably just I could get some of these and mount them around. And I've got a camera up here which I haven't turned on yet that's got a ring light around there. I don't know if that's any good or not, but yeah, it's so much cheaper now. I mean, just that I'm still beside myself that that just it's a three hundred dollar display, you know, with the cart. You know, I got you know four hundred bucks for the whole thing there um, with the Apple TV and then it goes up. But point is, is that I just remember like. Before podcasting, remember, Justin, we would do the show at the James Randi Foundation. We would do an audio cast because we would sit there going, what should we – Randy would be like, what do we call this? We're like, I don't know, internet radio, whatever. We, nobody knew what to call this because the word podcast hadn't been invented yet. We had to have a telephone line. like, Or was we using a, a – yeah, we had the, the line going from the computer to the modem line was the longest cord we could find. And when people would come into the studio, they would trip on it and they'd unplug – and our our podcast our, our shows were just a battle, and this was just an audio stream. This is using real like you know real audio. What was it? Real, real audio, yeah, yeah, audio. real audio. Whatever streaming thing they had there, 
you know. And then, you know, we always grumble though, like the tools haven't got much better, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, geez, the, the 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 fact that they're, I mean, there's a few companies that are trying to make it a branded thing, but uh, uh, the fact that like feed burner is still just garbage. In fact, it reminds me. Uh, I got to go check my feed burner stats because uh, the best way to do it is to check them on uh, 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 check them on the first so you can set it for 30 days because God forbid you'd want to get any more granular with your numbers. Wow. Anyway, yeah, feed burner was a great, you know, feed burner, those you don't know, was if you if you create a podcast. You need to create, you know, an RSS feed, which basically makes it when you say, "Hey, what episodes are there?" It pulls up this list of these are the most recent episodes. And FeedBurner is a way that format to make it very clear: this is the podcast episode, this is the title, this is that. Mm -hmm. FeedBurner's been around for 12 years, 14 years, like right at the start of pod, maybe 15. And I think they got bought by Google. Yep. Yeah, and then exactly. they were like, great. And then Google just sort of, it's one of those projects, like there are no engineers on it. You know, they, the, at night the janitor comes in and goes and, <laughs> you know, make sure the server space is fine. And then he walks off because, and it's, it's sad because uh, Apple and Brit embraced podcasts way early on with iTunes and it was wonderful for podcasting. It was yeah. really a big moment because that's how discoverability, whatever, and then they kind of went off and forgot about it. And then they finally added up a really cool, a pretty good podcast app. But their, their resources are getting better. But Google, Google has sort of had some infrastructure things. But man, like, like, I don't know. Like, I would love, I would love like a Google, like web services for podcasts, you know, like just pay us here, upload it here and whatever. And yeah, we'll get all the data and all this there. I mean, it would just be. Such a smart play for them, though. Uh, the, the fact that it is still as annoying, you know, my, my, my brother and his wife want to do and are doing a, like, parent podcast. And he was like, hey, what's the easiest way to do this? And I'm like, man, it's like, the, 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 really, the best thing you have going for you is that, like, it's the same tools that I was using 10 years ago, but at least I've been using them for 10 years so I can explain to you how frustrating they are. Well, yeah, there are, you know, there are services like Anchor, which just got bought by Spotify, which try to simplify it. But my problem with Anchor is it's very opaque, you know, on what it is and, you know, what, where, where does it live? What does it do? How do I control it? Whatever. And, you know, it doesn't feel like it's the YouTube of podcasting. And well, I think cause it, it fell into, you know, there, there's a few different buckets that podcasting, uh, you know, innovations tend to go into podcast creation or podcast distribution. Podcast creation tends to be about the simplest possible way. And it's very obsessed. They tend to be very obsessed with like, make a podcast on your phone, make a podcast by hitting a button and talking. Yeah. And it's like, that's okay. But I kind of feel like that content is now very clearly the domain of Twitter and, and Instagram. I think that if Instagram, if there was, if, if the tools that Anchor had were for Instagram as a way that you could just like make a cool new thing and post it to Instagram really, really easily, a visualized, uh, uh, you know, take machine, mm -hmm. then that would be pretty cool. But for podcasting, it's just not what it needs to be. Uh, I, you know, I was approached by Anchor months and months and months ago, uh, and I think two pivots for them ago. Uh, and they were like, hey, we'll, we'll pay you to just make content. And it's like, yeah, but I got to talk into my phone and I got to use their UI. I just, it wasn't worth my time. Uh, now uh, they're, they've, they've pivoted more toward being a podcast hosting thing, but that puts them in con in a uh, uh, conflict with everybody else that wants to do it, which basically is just a way that they can control ads, sure. you know, uh, yeah. it, all about ad sales or, or, or app uh, downloads that they can then, you so uh, i don't know it, it just it, it's it's uh, my, my 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 kingdom for and there are cool places that uh, simplify everything i think like what fireside is is one where it's just a an easier upload and analytics kind of platform than feed burner but right uh it's a little pricey for my taste yeah uh, the, there's still fireside there's still libsyn is still around they've they've been around forever uh, it's 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 weird, right? Like because the ways that you were you could do a podcast ten years ago 
are still the ways you can do them. Um, and there are a few of these services like Fireside or Anchor that are trying to find new inroads, but but also when what you want is some is granular control or you know re, you know recording on a certain platform or publishing editing on certain platforms, uh, there's still not an all-in-one everything yet. And I think you know companies like Anchor kind of want to be that if everyone changes what they think all is and that's not ever going to happen uh, yeah anchor was a you know they I, there was a fun sort of you start off like oh create a podcast pull out your phone and like i think that a cool thing i think you could talk to a friend or something which was a great idea of like the the duplex part of that was kind of cool but then you're like oh like i got this thing here it's not weird things it's not you know now if i want to go put this on the itunes store i got to go through them and and i mean just sure. it's it's challenging. It's really, I don't know, because it's like YouTube worked because, hey, just put it on YouTube. Everybody knows there's a thing called YouTube. You know, yeah, you grab yeah. a video, you put up there, type in these boxes. You're not worried about delivery behind the scenes. What are you going to say, Bryce? Well, uh, but part of the issue with YouTube for podcasting is uh, there are still barriers. If you're, say, creating a new account, right, there are still barriers to having unlimited length of videos or near unlimited length of videos. And so if you're doing an hour long show, you kind of have to be able to grease the wheels a little bit to get, get that stuff started. And the other thing is, you know, historically it, you know, YouTube used to be all about views. And so it, you wanted something that was shorter, you know, you wanted something that yeah. people could finish and get onto the next video. Um, where now we're only, you know, in the past couple of years, YouTube has really focused on watch time which is is why a lot of podcast stuff is is starting to see a, a home again on YouTube, but you know with YouTube that's there the algorithm is a black box they don't know how it works and you don't know how it works certainly and and so it's it's a weird yeah. it's not a discovery platform in oh. the same way iTunes or Google Play or Spotify is certainly certainly and I would say that and sometimes it can be. You know, in a, and like I, I never, I, I'm trying to think the number of podcasts I've listened to that came from me looking in iTunes for fun, stuff to find, very limited. YouTube stuff I find all the time. You know, I found Defunct Land and everybody else knew about it, but like nobody told me. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And, you know, and I think, yeah, I think on one hand, there's the simplicity of publishing and there's simplicity of, of you know, then there's trying to solve the discovery issue, but right. I don't know. I have no answers. I mean, ultimately, God, it, in in a different world, I would have loved for Apple to invest just a little bit in in creation tools. Uh, and I know that that's not their wheelhouse. They've never seen the money in it. Uh, uh, if anything, the fact that they created the de facto home for podcasting is something that they enjoy the status of when it when it matters. But They've never really put a lot of time and effort into it or specifically to evolve it. You know, uh, you would you would think when they are in a battle with Spotify uh, for for uh, people in Spotify is now spending a ton of money on curating and building out uh, uh, also being the home for your podcast that Apple and Apple Music would be a perfect integration. It's literally two yeah. apps on the phone. It could be mm -hmm. an easier one but app. If, you know, if I, I think part of it is that podcasters are adverse to change, like, um, you know, it was within the past year or so that Apple updated their guidelines for RSS metadata um, yeah. so that uh, along with all the things that you normally put in, they also have fields for just your episode title, just the title of the episode without numbers or the name of the show in it. Um, excerpts, you can tell if it's a trailer for an episode or if it's a full episode you can say if your podcast is serialized you can have seasons you know a lot of these new metadata things and it was it was last month or so when apple sent out an email that was like hey you know we have these new metadata things if you wouldn't mind using them um and there was this huge blowback of just like well don't tell me not to put the episode number in my title because people need to know what number it is and if, yeah, if i tell them what numbers they didn't care and they haven't cared forever so it's like look i think that it was a good decision for them to say like all right let's standardize things yeah. and you're but but you have to expect that you're going to get blowback 
when as long as you weren't distributing you know malware <laughs> uh, uh, then they were fine with it and, like and it was, yeah and they had to, to roll it back and say I mean it's fine you know it's fine if you have the name of your podcast it's not fine if you have an episode title or number in your thing but you know but that, that is that's, that's the that's thing like that's look, the one yeah that's the one thing that I, either people. either you care about the community that is dealing with you mm-hmm. or you do not and inaction is not caring sure uh, uh, uh that, that 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 leads to tone deaf uh uh tone deaf messaging but but you also know, now, if people if what people want is something that's not going to change or is rigid i i would think keeping have keeping a stable you know software directory would be Sure. Is exactly no, what people say it, that they it's want. It's worth it. It's worth it. But if, if they're not going to change and they don't care and it's hard to get in touch with like anybody there mm-hmm. and uh, you have no idea how it works, you have no idea how people get featured, you have no idea, uh, you know, they, recently they started adding analytics through there, uh, then you spend most of your time thinking about, okay, this is a static, if imperfect thing in my life. How do I work my way around it? Yeah. Here's Here's, here's the thing too. It's like, I, again, I'm an Apple fanboy, but also frustrated. Like when they did Final Cut 10, you know, it was a yeah. great example of, hey, you know, our engineers, we've been working on the video and we think we've seen the future of how video is. And iMovie's cool because people make more movies with iMovie. We're going to push a lot of this to Final Cut 10. And I think it's a technologi- technologically amazing project product. It's garbage for trying to get things done. I stopped using it. I mean, like we we had when we did years ago, I did my show. On A and E, we were, you know, we had Apple was talking to us like, oh, do you want to use Final Cut? You know, because we've been Final Cut, like, and we talked to Apple like, oh, we're probably gonna use Premiere. They sent Apple people over to talk to us about how to do this workflow, and we're like, well, you know, we're doing, you know, doing twelve episodes. Each episode's gonna have probably three hundred hours, two hundred hours of raw footage. All, like, well, okay. In their mind, you know, you're making a movie. You know, you're yeah. you're not producing a series and doing this. And that was one of the problems is management of data. And like, well, we have this other way to do this. We're like, it's a totally different workflow. And like, you want us to retrain for this. Yet nobody. And they've had like, well, they're like, and I remember they're saying this like, we you know Walter Murch is using Final Cut to do this. I knew the project Walter Murch was working on because a friend of mine financed it, and Walter Murch was doing the polish cut on it, not mm-hmm. going through the 40 or 50 hours or hundreds sure. of hours of stuff, the documentary. I remember they go, yeah, they said Walter Murch. I'm like, I know the effing project that he did. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and that was a thing that even frustrated me because they're like sitting there like, well, if it's good enough for Walter Murch, it's like he's not doing what it was. It was a very frustrating thing where I was personally connected in some uh, levels to this podcasting. It's like, Hey, you know what people should do, and we're Apple, and we figured it out. And it's like, like you said, like yeah, like like yeah, don't put episode titles in there. Don't do this. Like, are you serious? You know. And then it's it's it drives me kind of nuts because it's engineers are people who think we have a better way. Like, look at where people are. You know, what's the I am pie story? You know, don't put in sidewalks. Watch where people are walking, and it's a story that Steve Jobs loves. You know, where are people walking? That's where you want to be rather than we're going to build skyways and bridges. We just need you all to use the elevator now. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I would like to give kudos to Patreon. Because Patreon is a company that very publicly burnt their hand on the stove a couple times with announcements and and uh, rolling back. But they eventually hit a point in which they realized that they need to make more money on certain kind of accounts. And so they, and and uh, uh, I don't know how public this is, but they had a meeting with creators, with, with a, a fairly large strata of creators. They floated these uh, changes that were coming. They got their feedback on how people would react. Uh, and when they announced their feedback, I knew the fact, I knew by the fact that my chat room and Twitter mentions weren't all kill Patreon, that they'd succeeded. Because they they made a, a they, they announced basically that they were going to strata out certain accounts where uh, either you can have a very dirt dumb Ko-Fi esque uh, free account that is like as uh, quick as just setting something up that doesn't have tiers. If you're the next level up, like uh, many of us are, uh, you are gonna you can have tiers. Perfect, great. I need tiers if I'm gonna pay wall certain content. And then when you get up to some of the people that have built staffs on on top of their Patreon, right. then there's another level that you know costs a little bit more, but you get added services, including somebody that you just know you have a number that you can call, and it's their job, rain or shine, to talk you through all this stuff so you can make sure that everything's working fine. 
and that was good. And then going forward, there's going to be a change in their in their percentage. But they didn't change the percentage for everybody. They they grandfathered in people that had already bit, built businesses. Now I think they understood that they didn't understand their community before, and they are now better at it. Like that's right. all you want when you're talking about things that are as as important as livelihood. If Facebook changes their algorithm, uh, then look, unless I'm selling Facebook ads, I don't really care. Uh, but if Patreon changes how they do things, I care a lot. If iTunes changes how they do things, I care a lot. These are how I make my living. Right. And I think that's mm -hmm. handling it where they did, where they grandfathered people in and all that. That was really smart. Because you understand these things have to change. And, you know, Patreon... To have growth, they need to change the revenue models. We get that. You can like a thing, but you you can start a business. Then you see how people use it, and you realize, like, hey, we're not making the revenue we thought we were making, or you don't know where your distribution is. Like, Patreon, is is our average podcast going to have 30 listeners? Or, yeah. you know, or is it going to be, you know, 500? But, you know, they're, you're going to have – you might find we're making most of our revenue here, but we have more people here, so it's hard. But, yeah, telling people, hey, we're not changing the – you know – changing the terms of the deal mm -hmm. all of a sudden is best sort of way. And if you, it is better then you let people grow into it. You know, there are a lot of features and things like that I use now that I hated at first, you know, but hey, by yeah. the way, have any, have any of y'all used a, a Ko-Fi KO dash F I? No, I know what that is. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a, a similar sort of funding platform. The idea being like, oh, would you buy me a cup of coffee? Then oh, give me give oh. me three dollars. Ko-fi or coffee? Well, they have a hyphen in the name. There's the first problem. Well, okay. So, so. Uh, I, I do the free political newsletter, right? And I wanted to try something out. Like I, I just wanted to put some kind of thing, a little tip jar, on the free political newsletter because obviously I, I can't charge for it because that's the whole point, and you don't really charge for newsletters. Uh, but I did want to have a thing where it's like, hey, look, this is kind of original content that I'm putting out every day. Knowing my audience, I'm sure that there's X amount of people that if I literally just put out a tip jar, uh, that they would be down for it. So I know I have uh, PayPal.me, but PayPal.me to me still seems a little formal, right? Uh, uh, Venmo seems a little bit too hip. So I'm like, all right, you want to know what? Ko-Fi might be right there in the middle. It's going to have a little bit of the creature comforts of... Hey, just throw a couple dollars at a at somebody, and also it's funny because their their default number is three dollars because that's about the cost of a cup of coffee. And there's like the meme going on in in our community about how I do the three dollar political newsletter. But uh, I swear to God, it is so cutesy to a fault. I for the life of me can't just find a dashboard about how much I get paid. How much I've gotten paid. I can't even really? find you on here. Yeah, I have had no luck. Oh, in... oh, oh, kofi.com slash free political newsletter. Uh, I see. Oh, I wonder why. But uh, so you can't even find like a dashboard. Yeah. Like I, I, I just, I uh, basically, I just have to go. It just plugs right into my PayPal and I have to go look in my PayPal to see how much I've gotten. But there's oh, no analytics. There's no like. Hey, these amount of people click through and and didn't give like, it's it's very very weird. That's weird. Are we talking about? Uh, sorry, I had to pick up the kids. Are we talking about uh, alternatives to Patreon? Uh, we're uh, just talking about Kofi. Yeah, well, I think we 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 started talking about uh, podcasting and and uh, Apple being the king yet not caring uh, uh, about it, and then caring a little bit in terms of their metadata and the and the community getting upset and then it turned into patreon and really giving kudos to patreon for like after publicly burning their hand on the burner a couple times they made a big change to their core services uh, in terms of straddling out um you know uh, what things are going to cost and adjusting some of the percentages but they grandfathered everybody in they were very clear in terms of the messaging on it and the fact that my at replies in the chat room wasn't all, when are we squatting up to murder everybody at Patreon? Uh, I, I gave them high marks, A plus. Thursday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Though I do think, you know, if, if Kofi is just a direct to PayPal thing, I bet people probably appreciate there not being a middle layer because PayPal already like has you wait until, you know, funds transfer and stuff. 
I bet oh, if yeah, you're, I don't, I, I don't, I don't need for it to be. I don't need for them to hold my money. I'm fine with them pitching it directly into the PayPal. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted a page. How much money have I made? Mm. Boop. Like you've made a hundred dollars. Hooray! Now I can know. Oh wait, let me look back at how much money I made in April compared to how much money I made in November. Like mm -hmm. you're otherwise like what what are you what is the point of you except for being a cutesy fun overcomplicated homepage? yeah well it looks like they have a patreon style subscription tier called gold uh where you can do you can actually gate content and you know do commissions for artists change prices uh there's some analytic stuff here uh that's interesting i did not know that they had a subscription thing yeah, I, I guess it's like I have a problem when I'm frustrated with your core product hmm. to then be like, OK, well, cool. I'll give you money to upgrade this frustration that I have right now. Like if hmm. if I'm anticipating like, ooh, imagine all the cool things I could do if I had these other things like that'd be rad. But if if you can't do the like, here's how much money came in today. Here's how much money came in yesterday. Like, well, that, um. As we talk about it, I'm going through the sign in process. I'm seeing, I see they have like a gold tier, and I wonder if like that's where you have to. Yeah, go that, that, yeah, that's what that's what Bryce just said. Uh, uh, but I, but again, it's like I, I'm, I'm frustrated. If I'm frustrated with your core product, I don't know why I would ever want to upgrade. Well, let me ask you a question though. Um, does are they just a pass through for PayPal? Is that why they don't know? I mean, maybe, maybe they I are. just typed in my PayPal email address, which implies I didn't sign up for a PayPal. I think that's, I think that's what they are is they're just a pass through or basically they're just generating like a PayPal buy now or whatever button or something for that. Mm -hmm. um, let me see what, see what happens if I go to but my yeah, page. The, the gold information feature page that I found did not seem, it said it had some Google insight stuff. So it's like how people find you, but I, I, didn't even seem to see any financial yeah all it's doing is it's creating a a paypal guest checkout um or it's like it's basically like it's just generating like a paypal buy it now sort of thing here so they're not even processing the payments right which is cool i was thinking about building like an app that would let you like kind of create like an easy storefront using like PayPal me or whatever without you having to do a back-end accounting but i see your frustration but i don't think i think that's the thing is because you're so they, oh, yeah, they it won't let you buy. Have, What's so because like, because because they do send me emails, like when, the, but I guess it is somebody bought me a coffee and I don't know at what price they bought me this coffee. They click the button. So like here, like here's what happened. Like I went and I clicked the button and I want to go buy, but it won't let me buy because it's my own PayPal account, right? Which means that it's because it's processing through my own PayPal account, which means that they're not doing any kind of back end processing. Um, yeah. Huh. So I don't know if they get, and I think that it might do, you could set a return or return back to, uh, they might know it gets completed if it returns you back to there. But anyhow, I get your frustration, but I think they, what they do is they try to make it so simple. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and look, they, they wanted to make it uh dirt dumb. Uh, I still think that there's a lot of things that, yeah get a little bit more complicated than, than I would want. But, uh, and who knows whether I'll stay on it. Cause at that point I might as well just have a PayPal. Like I, I like the idea that the PayPal dot me thing is literally just how much would you want to give? Bam, hit the button. You're done. It's literally just a page with one search field or one field. Uh, but I, I wanted to give it a shot just because I knew yeah. it was another name on the scene. I've seen it bandied about a bunch. Yeah. I, a co hyphen phi. That's, no, it's like a coffee, right? Yeah. Find, buy me a coffee. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any picks? Any picks? I am almost done with blitz scaling. Uh, on your recommendation, I'm finishing it. And uh, to the book's credit, it does a really good job of reminding you all the very good reasons to not enjoy or not engage in blitz scaling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it keeps saying like, like, hey. If, if you're in this situation, I'm like, which I am. They're like, don't blitz scale. And I was like, okay, don't. great. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but I am enjoying it. I think, I think it's a good, uh, I'm glad I'm 
finishing it. Uh, so whether or not it's for you, I, I think there are good ideas. Just the general idea of like there is a place and a time where the right winning move is to engage in highly inefficient spending of resources in order to uh, establish yourself in certain marketplaces. Yeah, that's a very good way to put it. Uh, I'll, I'll make a pick. I Back to Kickstarter. Baobacks is a company that founded on Kickstarter. They did the ultimate travel jacket, and now they're doing the ultimate travel pants. Ooh. Eventually, I'll have ultimate travel everything. But uh, I, I actually, as far as uh, Kickstarters go with like bigger ticket, famous kind of uh, items, I was very impressed with uh, with with the travel jacket. It, it's held up. I've worn it a lot. Uh, it is my go-to. It's raining uh jacket that I that I wear on planes a uh, ton of pockets I keep I, I keep a bunch of stuff in there just so I always have them like chargers and cords and stuff like that uh, so I'm excited to see what they do with the pants and that's yeah. a Kickstarter thing still I yes it is yep. kickstarting oh. again but I got a email that was like hey because you back before here's like a early bird thing that we're doing so I took advantage of it yeah, I'll check that out. Like, I have the travel jacket, too, and uh, dig it. Yeah, uh, uh, man, I I'm still waiting on some uh, headphones that I ordered, uh, you know, two years before I quit traveling for a living. Uh, so, uh, And I, I get diligently every two months. They're still in China, working on some stuff. Hmm. Uh, um, I, I, don't, I don't think I have an After Things pick this week. Sorry, I, I usually do, but... Uh... I, I don't think I have one. Andrew, do you have one? Um, you know, my pick is going to be... Quick, look around here. Coronavirus, <laughs> uh, AirPods. Uh... Audio listeners, quite literally, that's what he's doing. If you've seen that no, Family no, Guy bit you know with I Stephen King... I put something aside that I forgot about completely. And it's not... It's I'm not here to push my book Orbital, which is now in paperback, okay? Literally, I set this over here because I've been meaning for the last two shows to talk about this. And I forgot every single time, and I'm glad my frantic search. So, hey, look at this paperback copy, right? Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, that's a paperback book. Pages. It's got mm -hmm. pages in it. Mm -hmm. Looks you like podcast a real book. listeners really pay it's attention. Got yeah. Writing yeah. on oh, all of the pages, yeah. almost words arranged in order. Yeah. So, I wanted to do paperback copies of my books. Look at that about the author. Um, the problem was, it's a pain in the ass making books. I don't know if you know this. And we've talked about this because, like, I you know, Brian, you went through a period where you had to convert a bunch of your stuff into books and all that sort of things and trying to do versions. You don't want to spend too much time, particularly because, like, if you're an indie author, in my experience, most people are just going to buy the Kindle version, right, or the whatever ebook ebook version is. Right. I started using for that a while ago for my independent stuff a, a software called Vellum, which is on the Mac. And Vellum makes it so much easier to import your because normally you take it you create a word file then you convert it and then you upload it to amazon or wherever but there's that that middle layer like things formatting can get lost or it's hard and there's things like libre and stuff pub but it's like it's like coding it's really really not fun what vellum does is it allows you you can import directly from scrivener or microsoft word you take it in there you create your chapters you choose how you want the format of the book to look, right? And we're looking at the examples of it like, do you want to have the big, fancy, big first letter inside of your ebook? The little stylings has got these templates there, okay? Once you do that and you add your image, you output it and it outputs it at every format, you know, for Kindle, for Nook, for whatever else, which is great. It's one of the things I love about Vellum. Now, if I have to make changes to my ebook, I just go into Vellum and I tweak it here, tweak it there, and it's good, and I can up change it and upload it really quickly. Vellum added support for print publishing a while ago, and it's pricey, but you, if you buy the whole Vellum press thing, that ebook to convert it into a, a print book is easy. It took me 30 minutes to make that book and then upload it to Amazon's KDP program, like in, or the, the Create Space. And now I have a print version of my book. It is so effing simple to do this now. You know, and it's one of things people are like, oh, I was thinking about publishing a book. I'm like, spend a day learning some of these tools and you will save yourself a lot of money. A lot of money. You know, eventually you look at Vellum, you're like, ah, it's $300, you know, for the app. Like, yes, but once you have it, you can produce as many books as you want and whatever. 
and I loved the way that book turned out. I was just I picked it up and I'm like, it's the the page layouts, all of that stuff, just just delightful. So, nice, that's awesome. That's my pick. And uh, you know, my other my perennial pick is hey Udemy, learn to code. It's amazing. You lose time and you forget where you are and time travel into the future as you get lost in projects. Mm-hmm. No, uh, that's it. It's been after. Cool. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Good show, everybody. Yay. Nicely done, team. Yeah. Uh, we got Cord Killers coming up in a little bit. Justin, what do you got today? Jury or politics? Nothing. Uh, I'm actually taking the uh, uh, jury is already up in the feeds. Um, I, uh, I'm taking the week off of streaming on the Justin R. Young channel to focus on me. I need to get this writing done. Gonna, oh. gonna, gonna watch some animated trailer part boys, are you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not get behind me, Satan. Uh, um, a little, um, little bit of dad legend in your future. Yeah. Can I call you in five minutes, Justin? Sure, yeah. Cool. Right. Uh, do you Good got any live streams right. coming up, Andrew? Doing anything? Any um, Twitter things? Facebook Live? You know, uh, no, Bryce. No? Okay. Cool. I, I live a, a lonely, solitary <laughs> life. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I've got a... Uh, I, I'm working now. I'm working on the, the, the Lucid Stream coding project. I'm working on that thing. You know, just getting that thing going and seeing where I, I was just... I like the idea of having a, a program that's working on an app that... I, I saw the I could see the end within like a week or two and have it ready, you know, yeah. which is exciting to me instead of something like, well, three months from now, four months from now. Yeah, but it's been fun. A lot of fun, like just working on using like everything from voice recognition to Firebase and all that other stuff and all this new tools. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, we're going to log off for now. We'll see you in a few hours for Cord Killers. Bye, guys. Yay. Bye. Bye.